Hey, Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? We ready to roll? <sighs> <laughs> Broadcasting live from the internet, it's Tuesday night, and this is the Panels on Pages podcast. Big boys playing with big toys. This is quality content. The boomers are into it. Hey, man, I just show up. With your host, Lee Rodriguez. Uh, I am a visionary. Like, oh, you have a podcast? I'm like, no, no, that's not me. That's somebody else. Jason Nyes. Yeah, sure. I'm not getting any vegetables in my diet. I'm just a thick boy. Jose Guzman. Is Jose on the show tonight? He says he's coming. It's like Elton John all over again. Just minus the death threats. Kelly Harris. Reach your hand in your pants there, big boy. That's not me. I don't sound like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and our good buddy Mahoney. Hey, Mahoney's here. What's up, Mahoney? We can do just glorious, wonderful things on our phones, people. No one's ever done anything like this before. It's going to be massive. It's going to be great. I mean, obviously, I think it'll be great. And it's all killer, no filler. My seat's on fire. You take so hot. Come on. It's so good. It's pretty good. It's there. It's reliable. You know what you're getting every single time. Man, I'm so glad you found us. You're all terrible people, and I'm glad you're my friend. <laughs> Put that in the intro. <laughs> That's really funny. Over 500 episodes, and you'd think they'd have the hang of it by now. It seems like the concept that would run its course very quickly. What is happening, everybody? Today is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, and this is episode number 560. I know that because I fucking checked this morning. (laughs) <laughs> panels on pages podcast i'm your host the lord reverend the rodriguez and joining me tonight we have mr jason nice they were put there by a man uh jose guzman come for the breadsticks stay for the gabagool <laughs> kelly harris we all remember the mr potato head show no <laughs> we gotta talk about this uh and our good buddy mahoney uh, Lee, yesterday was Rigatoni Day, and you didn't even have any. <laughs> no, sure didn't. How do you sure know didn't. he didn't have any? I can tell. <laughs> no, I definitely didn't. Uh, Lee hates did pasta. Yesterday. Shit. I don't even know what I had last night. Four potatoes it... and a Red Bull. <laughs> no. Oh, no, you know what? I had uh, I had hibachi, so that should be delicious. Way better than that was close. It's like you knew that there was an assignment, but you weren't you couldn't remember what it was. You were like hibachi, yeah, hibachi. Yeah, day. yeah. yeah. that's that's the ticket. You know, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, okay, so nice. I'm glad you brought that up because um, why the fuck were people talking about peaches yesterday or something? Uh, well, let it me was? find. The like, was there tweet. a reason? Yeah, uh, somebody. It was a tweet to distinguish, I think, millennials from Gen Z people. Ex- uh, well, it's it's elder millennials from other millennials and it's okay okay okay. uh i got it right here it's at at baddest mama jamma on twitter jessica ellis a good way to tell elder millennials from younger ones is to shriek sing peaches come from a can at them and see what happens and then the correct response to that is they were put there by a man put there by a man and then to that i asked what's the incorrect response what is what the what Anything, anything anything else? other than that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mahoney, if they look at you confused. Have you never yeah. heard the song Peaches by the Presidents of the United States of America? I so Moving I'm to sure. the country gonna Yeah, eat no, a I know the song, but if somebody peaches. screech saying peaches come from a can at me, no, 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 but if yeah, you know, but if no, if they just scream at you, it's terrifying. But if they have, but if you can pick out the rhythm and yeah. you're, you know, even remotely on pitch with it, like oh yeah, you fucking put their by manufacturer downtown. Now I, I don't think I would have known. I uh, asked, and I think what that means is that I'm young and hip, and all of you are old. <laughs> it's true. You <laughs> that's are. True, that's what it is. You are. Well, the you youngest. know what, Rigatoni boy, you might be right. <laughs> you are. The I youngest. am in touch with the youth. And that is why I am the most popular. Yeah, you are the youngest and hippest of all of us. That is a Absolutely. guarantee. Uh, now, I asked the question, why did they have to be put there by a man? Why couldn't they be put there by a woman? And then well, I was, answered... it was the past. I answered my own question, and it's like, well, because the CEO is a woman. Real girl boss energy. Oh, there you go. Peach hmm. CEO okay. Okay. is a lady with her... Uh, 
you know, laborer man putting the peaches in the can. Would you call and, her potentially Princess Peach? I mean, that's a little reductive. <laughs> a little dis- disrespectful, you know. Uh, I would I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Peach song is Queen woke. Peach. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as to call a CEO of a peach company princess. Yeah. <laughs> that might give me. What if she legally is a princess? She's. Well, sure. I would. I would call she's her. Like, your she's like Jason Nyes. I am a duchess. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I didn't spend eight years in royalty school to not be called princess. Yeah. Mahoney, how about you? How about you leave the titles to the adults in the room and you just go play with your <laughs> pasta? All right. <laughs> I might have some more rigatoni. I'll be over here. <sighs> Christ. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, and then uh, Kelly, what what fresh hell? Did you pull that image of the Mr. Potato Head show out of? Because, oh my god. I was struck by just remembering that show existed. And I feel like most of everyone else just struck it from their memory. No, I, I mean, no idea. do not remember this at all. We all yeah. remember I think Mr. that was Potato before Head my time, Kelly. hanging out with his best friend, Baloney. <laughs> nope. Not it's... in the slightest. Ooh. What what channel was this on? What year I was I want to say it was on like Fox Kids, I think. That has CBS written all over it. Like CBS was like the also ran of Saturday morning programming. So uh, we showed some images on the screen. It's like they're puppets. Yeah, it's all puppets. It's live action puppets and it's fucking yeah. wild. Yeah, it was on Fox Kids. From September twelfth, nineteen ninety eight to February sixteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, so real flash in the pan. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was my wow. senior year of high school, so I was a little out of it. Yeah, it was thirteen episodes. Uh, most of the episodes are lost to history, from what I understand. Wow. Oh, so they did some shit on them, huh? No, it's just. They were never, like, officially released. There was one VHS tape that I think had, like, four episodes or so on it. And then, like, the, the rest is just lost. It's so weird to think of something not existing all the time. So, the... Uh, could, let, like, to be gone is kind of wild. Let me just read to you this nonsense okay. that is the uh, episode description for the uh, pilot... Uh, the episode was titled Aliens Dig Baloney. Uh, <laughs> Baloney <laughs> attempts to deliver a VHS tape containing Mr. Potato Head's cop episode to the TV guys when suddenly a pair of aliens arrive on Earth seeking a new ruler for their interstellar empire. Meanwhile, Dr. Fruitcake creates the ham monster for Mr. Potato Head's monster episode, which proves to be too dangerous for him to control. Oh my god. All right. That's... uh. That sure sounds like something. Kelly, would you like to hear a description of the characters from Wikipedia? I sure would. Let's see. We have, of course, Mr. Potato Head, the main protagonist. Uh, He is an anthropomorphic potato who serves as the leader of the kitchen crew. He's often referred to as P.H. by his friends and colleagues. Hey there, P.H. Then you, of course, you, of course, have Baloney stack of baloney who is Mr. Potato Head's best friend. He often serves as the voice of reason. Then you have uh, Potato Bug who is a female potato bug. Usually seen as the strange one in the group. Stemming from her wacky personality and various quirks like believing goblins deliver the newspaper every morning, mistaking the term scapegoat for an actual animal, talking to shoes like they're people, or having a fascination for the undersides of tables. But Potato Bug is energetic, kind, and fiercely loyal to her friends, Kelly. And then, of course, Canny, Mr. Potato Head's dog made out of dog food cans. Jose, we're doing important things like talking about the Mr. Potato Head show. Could you turn off your Xbox? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, Mahoney, I can't help but notice that you skipped uh, Queenie Sweet Potato. I did, and I also, I didn't read Ham Monster. There's a character called Ham Monster. Is the anthropomorphic sweet potato, which serves as the kitchen crew's diva. She's gifted with an amazing voice and is viewed by most of the crew, especially by Mr. Potato Head, as the most talented performer in the bunch. 
Her love for sugar cream pies and her crush on Leonardo DiCaprio are both brought up numerous <laughs> times throughout the series. That's great. <clears throat> so I have the uh, Mr. Potato Head show intro here. I think it's. Yes. I have it. I'm looking at it right now, like in another window. It's batshit crazy. Well, I yeah. linked you guys to the, the full window? episode of Aliens Dig Baloney, but yeah. I've got the intro right this is here. Fucking nuts. I feel like this is worth getting demonetized over. So uh, let's. Yeah, let's go. it's worth it. But they're not going to demonetize this. Oh yeah. Who was that Queen? Yep. Oh yeah, they gotta put his features on. Oh, that's Mr. Potato Head. Yes. He makes a show. He makes a show. So it's like the Muppet Show. Tell him what to do. Oh, there's people. So is he the Mr. Potato Head? Mr. Potato Head. I think so. Like he's the famous Potato Head. Yeah, and that's why he has it. He's the Cedric the Entertainer of the Mr. Potato Head show. It's oh. interesting that you said that because I never would have pegged the the classic Mr. Potato Head as an African American potato. <laughs> but this Mr. Potato Head definitely gives off yeah, That potato is black as hell. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I don't know why. It's the the color of the potato is it, it's everything about it. Yeah. <laughs> everything. That's a fucking trip. I had no idea. Holy shit. Honestly, well, this show sounds that, great. The episode descriptions on Wikipedia are wonderful and I Really wish that we could watch this. Yeah, it's all insane. Well, it looks like we got something for that Twitch gimmick. <laughs> when I'm Queenie gets depressed, she uses Baloney's happy pillow to make herself feel better. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> when Potato That's Bug right. accidentally kills Mr. Potato Head's prized plant, she seeks the help from Dr. Fruit Kick to make her smarter. That's what the children need. Yep. <laughs> Oh, the finale was a two was a two parter. Oh shit! I better let them that cliffhanger. Yeah, too. but look, like, it oh. aired all out of order. Everything's yeah. all up. Demonetizes if it doesn't exist anymore, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, episode eleven yeah, like, aired in October. The money to? It's a potato. <laughs> yeah, wow, they definitely aired this out of order. What the hell? You would think that Hasbro at least has the rights to it. They're probably just... just like a a real George Lucas. Star Wars holiday special mm. situation, like yeah, we you know it's there, but we don't we don't want it. No one wants to. I don't want that. the people to know about Mister Potato Head. Yeah, in Queenie late... goes on a diet, but her cravings result in her unleashing an ancient evil from a bag I... of popcorn. I don't want people to know about the sweet potato that loves cream pies. <laughs> in late 1998, <laughs> someone decided <laughs> to give Mister Potato Head a black makeover, and we don't know why, but it happened. <laughs> And then they were like, put a sexy potato on here who wants to get cream pied by Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. Do it. Oh, apparently someone uh, did find all the episodes. Uh, it was Lost Media Wiki members Parus and Luray found all episodes of the series online. Wow. What's the Where'd real fucking heroes out there, you guys? I think they might be on the YouTubes. I think we know what we're watching for our next uh, commentary night. <laughs> nice. Do it. Yes. How long are the episodes? Half hour? Twenty minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's got to be like twenty minutes. No, it's an hour-long drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an episode of twenty-four. It's filmed in real time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's tackling nuts. the hard topic. So yeah. Uh, otherwise, I don't have really shit we're talking about. Um, other than. Uh, Got into Dragon Ball Z Kai with uh, with my son, with Jack. They're out of school now. And uh, turns out that boy is all about some Dragon Ball. So he's probably going to be kicking the shit out of me before too much longer. Just trying to get all violent on me. He's, Lee, uh... I don't want to interrupt. But we did not read the episode for Forsake Me Not. <laughs> oh, God. Where the TV guys gave Mr. Oh, TV guys have Mr. Potato Head do a reality show where he follows everyone around with a camera. 
But when his show turns out to be a show already a reality show? (laughs) No, no. It's a variety show. Now it's a reality show. But when his reality show turns out to be as boring as two dead frogs in a bucket, he pits his friends (laughs) against each other to liven it up. Jesus Christ. That's a... Fox that Kids. Was that a in 1998? <laughs> Fox Kids, December 19th, 1998. <laughs> uh, that's oh, no, there's an episode called Equal Rights. But oh, rights no. is in, like, W-R-I-T-E-S. The TV guys have Mr. Potato Head fire the writer, resulting in them sending Bully Boy to supervise his show. All right, well, we have to record a companion podcast every episode. Don't think I won't. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. Yeah, I got nothing we're talking about, Nice, but I know you do. Yeah, I so got a few things. What did you do this weekend? <clears throat> well, first off, uh, it had been a while since we had Jose and the Lady over for a movie night. So since Army of the Dead, the new Zack Snyder joint, dropped on Netflix, we decided to get together and uh, yeah. make some wings and watch a movie. You know, even though... Uh, we're mostly vaccinated. We're over 50% vaccinated. You know, it's still nice to sit at home and watch a movie instead of go to the theaters. Um, it's it's a fun time, Army of the Dead. So for those that don't know, because both of our ladies had no idea what this movie was until we sat down to watch it. In fact, Jose's lady w- was under the impression that it was a comedy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Army of the Dead. Yeah. The head gets ripped off and we're like, see, jokes. <laughs> yeah, so the concept is uh, there was a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas. They walled off Las Vegas. There's this uh, rich guy who wants to send in a team to clear out one of the vaults in his hotel of money that has already been replaced by insurance. So it's it's a heist movie in a quarantined zombie Las Vegas. And Batiste, okay. Batiste That's a pretty is in good it. pitch. It's, it's, yeah. it's a great concept. Um, and it's a fun time, but it's really fucking stupid. Uh, you don't care about any of the characters. I'm not saying any of the characters are uh, annoying or cringy or anything like that. You just don't, don't really give a shit. Like they don't give you enough to care about them. And yeah, I haven't watched it yet, but was really turned off by a two and a half hour runtime on a zombie movie. Like, See, that's too fucking it, long for a zombie. It's a fun oh, zombie long. movie, but you got to turn your brain off. If you start asking too many questions, you'll you'll get lost. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of real stupid decisions and big old plot holes and uh, yeah. That sounds like, like I don't know if I need to do that. I feel like. That should be an 85 minute movie. Yeah, exactly. I see I didn't notice the runtime, but everybody else did. Like it's fucking we started that movie at 8 and it ended at 10:30 and I was like, "Holy shit." Yeah, two and a half yeah. hours is too long to give me time to think about the movie I'm watching. I agree. Yeah, I agree. yeah zombie if movie you I would say that, if you want to go with that kind of concept, that's short, quick, get in, get out. Like mm-hmm. you don't need if you're going to establish things that don't make any sense, don't elaborate. Yeah. Just be like, yeah. "Go get my shit Definitely. out of my vault." Hour forty minutes. I I yeah. ate an hour and forty minutes. Yeah. yeah. If your movie's gonna be stupid, that's fine, but just make sure it's short. Well, it's it's yes. funny that you say that, Mahoney. That it's like just go get the money out of the vault, like cut to the chase, because not to spoil too much, but there's a plot ch- twist where the guy behind the whole thing really doesn't want the money; he wants something else. But this is all a secret, covert, illegal operation, anyhow. So why? bother with the ruse why not just send them in to get the thing you actually want instead of wasting yeah unless time. the thing you want them to get is like something they might just steal and take from you then just tell them what the fuck they're there to get no it it should have been oh, hey i want this thing but also yeah. you can take any of the money out of the else. vault that you yeah. want yeah. yeah so he hires them under false pretense that he wants money but he wants something else yes Yes, there was definitely okay. a hooker in that vault. <laughs> <laughs> so talking, about, you know, talking about the the perfect length and a silly thing or whatever. Uh, Kelly and I both watched uh, Psycho Goreman earlier this year and had a fucking romp of a time mm-hmm. with it. Uh, Psycho Goreman, which is wall to wall excellent, pure just ridiculous joy. Ninety nine minutes. Yep. The movie gets in, 
gets out, like, is there just in time to show you a lot of crazy, whacked out fucking creatures, and then it's over. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah, they, they could have really trimmed this down, which it's funny because it's Zack Snyder and... You know, lately yeah, he's not really. Point, he needs an adult. He, he's, he's not just, really. He needs an adult in there. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, also, it seems like he he, even though they there was so much studio meddling with Justice League, it seems like they just let him do his thing on this, and like now there's no excuses. There's no excuses for your terrible plot holes and your <laughs> unnecessary right. runtime, and uh, it was he was the he wrote this and he was the cinematographer. Which made it look like who was <laughs> the editor? <laughs> or yeah, exactly. It made it look like someone trying to ape Zack Snyder's style, but not quite <laughs> nailing it. Interesting. It was weird. Hmm. All right. So, it yeah. definitely had. A, it was all pretty much that new Batman Joker scene. Yes, yes. The real shallow the, the depth of field. In the back, mm-hmm. background. I was watching the Red Letter Media review of it for Half in the Bag, and they caught one of the cameras they shot it with had a dead pixel. Oh, no. Ooh, I, saw, no yeah, I saw way. someone tweet about that because they said they thought their TV had a dead pixel and oh, gave them a heart attack. Speaking of, I didn't even mention one of the best parts of the movie is Chris D'Elia was supposed to be in it, he got outed as a sex pest, so they digitally replaced him with Tignataro through the whole movie. They shot her on a green screen and chroma keyed her in there, like when they removed Superman's mustache, and they did a way better <laughs> job doing this yeah. than they did with the mustache. But it was that's wild. Easily, yeah, it looked pretty good. It was easily one of the most fun things of the movie is watching how they fucking retconned him out of existence. And like, That's wild. I got no love for the guy, but I just imagine like your first big Hollywood movie and you just get erased from it and replaced with a <laughs> little lesbian. <laughs> I mean, look, he got paid. He got his he fucking got paid, paycheck. But yeah, like, I'm sure he thought that this was his step to movie stardom. Yeah. Amazing. Paycheck or your career back in. Yeah. yeah. There's Yikes. some Was he the guy that was the boyfriend in Whitney? Yes. Yes. Okay. He was also the penthouse penthouse guy from uh Workaholics. Yeah, he looks like a real dirtbag. <laughs> he was also uh he was also the guy who drugged and fondled uh, underage girls in the second season of You. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Some real method also, acting there. He, he got into character and never got out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the second season of You, he plays a stand-up comic <laughs> who who drugs and takes naked uh, compromising photos of women while they're drugged in his house. Oh, my God. But, you know, Yikes. there's there's some really cool zombie stuff in there, some really good gore. Uh, it's it's a See, fun that's time. All I want. That's all I want. Yeah, it, that sounds, sounds cool. The, the, the pitch is so good that it's I, I, the only thing that turned me off of it right away was like, ah, fucking two and a half hours. Jesus yeah, but, Christ. But see, that's the thing. You, it will, the two and a half hour t- runtime will wear on you, and you'll be bummed that they didn't do a better job with the, the simple concept. And they weighed it w- down with way too much character stuff that you don't give a shit about. That's what happened to me with those Underworld movies. They were like, vampires, werewolves, they're in a war. And then they were like, the movie kind of sucks, though. It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. no! <laughs> that is such a good concept. You're not allowed yeah. to make a bad movie out I of got it. turned off of those Underworld movies when I saw that first movie in theaters. She walks into this big vampire mansion. There's this huge mirror, and she can clearly see herself in it. And it's like, come on, that's like day one yeah. vampire shit. <laughs> Well, that one you can give a pass on purely because vampires can't see themselves in mirrors because old mirrors were made with silver like as the coating. Sure. And vampires can't see each other in silver, and most mirrors these days are not made with silver. Okay, okay. I will give you that. I will give you that maybe in this universe... That's not a, a rule with their vampires. But also, you don't have to... Was she to, even invited inside of that son of a bitch? You don't huh? have to, to show them walking up to a gigantic mirror. Like, 
Right. Yeah. That's going to make a fucking fanboy like me get pissed off and not watch your other nine Underworld movies. I was always <laughs> told the Rise of the Lycans movie was good. I don't like their werewolf designs. Yeah, but I was just like, really, that's the one? <laughs> that's the one you, you guys like? All right. All right. I'll remember that Underworld panel in India. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's a whole other show. So uh, <laughs> uh, we... Yeah, don't get me started on that one. We called it an early night once the movie was over because Mary and I had to get up early the next day because uh, the week before, while we were watching HGTV with uh, uh, her dad and stepmom, I was scrolling you through... You were like, Inst- now's a good time to make a life-altering yeah, decision. Yeah, I was scrolling through Instagram <laughs> and one of the many uh, bulldog adoption sites that I follow had this bulldog that was still up for adoption and i showed the picture to mary and she was into it so i sent a dm i sent an email you know th- this whole a a- adoption agency has kind of been ghosting us for the better part of a year because we were you know at the beginning of covid we really wanted a dog and and i guess they just lost our email or whatever so got in touch uh, they got us in touch with the foster family who live in basically Miami. So uh, we had to make a seven-hour round trip down to Miami to meet this dog, English bulldog named Zoe, <laughs> uh, which I thought which was hilarious. funny. And, uh, you know, it was essentially we're – prob- we're most definitely bringing this dog home, but we, we got to meet her first. See what's up, uh, you know. Make sure we ask some questions, get her history and everything, and then we're most likely coming home with a dog. And uh, damn straight, we fucking did. And uh, she, it sounds like she was in the bedroom <laughs> with Mary when the show started, but it sounds like she had definitely shuffled out of the bedroom. So I expect her to find me in here at any point because I'm sure my voice is echoing through the house. But yeah, we're uh, we're dog parents now. Uh, it has been. I love the nice. idea of you asking the dog questions. Like, <laughs> okay, let's do this. Awesome. Um, hey, dog. Do you uh, what's your credit names? score? <laughs> yeah, it it has been a long uh, few days. Just because. What do you think about Israel? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah>. Bulldog. <laughs> uh, we're we're all getting adjusted to it. You know, it it's a shock to the system to go from you know just the two of us in a relatively clean house to. Two of us and a living, breathing, smelling, uh, shedding, drooling thing. And uh, uh, none of our stuff is clean anymore. Our house smells like dog. Uh, you know, uh, we ha- our, base- our lives have basically turned into making sure this thing doesn't shit or piss in our new house. Uh, but it's great. It and, sounds magical. And, you know, just a few days in, she's so sweet. Uh you know, she's got, uh, just like any bulldog, she's got health issues, she got eye problems, she snores, she breathes real heavy, she's got, you know, she licks her paws, because she's, I'm sure she's got some sort of uh, skin condition, but she's great, and I keep making the joke to Mary whenever she stops making noise, you know, because she usually there's some kind of noise coming out of this dog, but whenever she stops making noise, I just go to Mary, well, we had a good run, she's dead. <laughs> R.I.P. And it's just kind of like, you know, we've got a very finite time on this world with Zoe, so we're going to enjoy it while we can, but, you know, life time is fleeting. Or with the turtles. Life is... <laughs> oh, God. Life is fleeting. Jesus as, especially when In your the backyard, <laughs> Zoe. Especially when your face is designed like an English bulldog's, you know, you don't have long on this earth, so no. hopefully we can give her uh, a loving home to spend the rest of her life in. And uh, yeah, we're we're doggy parents now. Uh, we've already dropped something like not counting the two hundred fifty dollar adoption fee. Uh, you know, we've already dropped probably two three hundred dollars just on dog stuff. Trying to trying to take it easy. Thankfully, the Mahoney's sent us a dog bed, which was very nice. Heck yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's real good. Uh, love her to death. Uh, she really likes us to the point where, uh, like, give us some space, lady. Like, <laughs> like uh, we like our alone time too, you know. Why don't you? Why don't you go? Why don't you go sleep? Why don't you go play with your toy? Play with your hedgehog? Why don't you go get some? Why don't you go outside? 
you know, go do, do your own thing. Like, we all do our own thing in this house. Like, we're trying to play. Go, uh, make, make some friends. We have to wait until she falls asleep on the okay. couch at night before we can get on Fortnite. It's like, all right, this is our <laughs> oh shot. God. But because uh, as soon as she wakes up, it's like, all right, well, can't play Fortnite anymore because we got to take. At one point, Mary is playing on her Switch, Fortnite. We're, we're playing duos. And Zoe gets up off the couch. And Mary, in the middle of a match on her Switch, takes her outside and is playing Fortnite from the backyard while the dog is <laughs> pissing and shit. Love it. It was amazing. And then last little thing um, uh, related to our topic tonight, uh, we got to preview the new Orlando Portillo's last night. Fuck yeah. Uh, How was that? It was so good. Obviously, you know, Portillo's is one of the most consistent restaurants you can go to. It was very good. They had a limited menu because it was a preview thing and it was it was free. They were just asking for donations to second harvest food bank so it was like you could get a beef you could get a hot dog you could get a chicken sandwich you could get uh, an entree a side and a drink you know not to complicate things so i got a big old beef she got a portobello mushroom sandwich we got some fries some cheese fries some cokes they sent us home with uh little slices of chocolate cake so it was great it was great to be able to delightful yeah it was great to be able to taste that before the official opening and We'll be back there in October when the crowds die down because that world's largest white castle that they opened still has hour to two hour lines every day because it's yeah, but it's just white I castle. I don't right? think I would wait in it's line just, for ten minutes it's for white just castle. No, white I castle. wouldn't wait in line for white castle. It's just yeah, white castle, think. but you have to think this is the world's largest white castle in Orlando, tourist central. And you have to consider how many of those people in line have a vlog channel. Everywhere. That's true. White yeah. people don't have a lot going on. Right. Nope. Just doing hot girl shit. Yep. But uh, we hadn't really gotten anything to, like, no baby gates. We, we don't want to get a crate for Zoe, but we do want to get baby gates set up at some point. But... Uh, those don't come until tomorrow, and we had already scheduled this Portillo's thing before we knew that she was going to be coming home with us. So I had a bunch of my large totes filled with Ninja Turtles, six of them, big old heavy totes. Oh, is that the washing machine or is that her? <laughs> Not sure. They make, they make the same noises. <laughs> very consistent. <laughs> so I closed off, just very much like Army of the Dead, where they close off Las Vegas with a bunch of shipping containers. I closed off the room with the pizza wall with these six heavy ass totes, and you know gave her everything that she needed, and just hoping there was no messes when we got home, hoping that she didn't get out. We get home, and who knows how long after we left. She fucking bulldozed her way through those totes and was asleep on the couch that she's not allowed on. It was amazing. <laughs> Adorable. So yeah, it's been a busy week. Sounds uh sounds like flagrant disrespect. Gotta nip that shit, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not allowed in the bed, that's for sure. That bed is too nice and too expensive. She Give it time. is a very cute horrible disgusting monster that is she's got that big slobbery tongue hanging out in yeah, all those pictures she's that is adorable. very accurate uh she's very <laughs> cute. fucked up teeth yeah she, all she, those teeth are just the worst thing and that's just like, an abomination yeah but they thing. look good they she look yeah. good for bulldog teeth like yes yes the mouth is something to desire but those teeth look like somebody took a handful of teeth and <laughs> threw them at some <laughs> chewing gum yeah <laughs> we're like did that's it true perfect do they look good yeah, Jose's right. Like, for a bulldog, they're pretty good teeth. And uh, her breath isn't great, but it's not bad. Like, <laughs> for a bulldog, free, free she's, she's pretty good. <laughs> the other day, he was like, he smells like Butch, his, uh, his bulldog he had many years ago. Yeah. He's like, smells like Butch, which is to say, not good. Right. <laughs> smells like Butch, pees like Tasha. Yeah. Just peed in the house a couple times so far, but. We'll get there. Yeah, but that could be jitters. Yeah, nerves. sure. We're we're still getting getting comfortable. Uh, our thing is, whenever she wakes up, we immediately take her outside, and she is sick of that. Believe you me. 
See you well, I'm very happy for you. Well, thank you so He's much. Like, look, I, I, I swear, my best, my worst enemy, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. How about that? Let's we'll do that. Yeah. What you got going on, Jose? You get any new critters? No. Not no that he knows. Of. No. We're 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 almost ready though. Once we get a little more situated, I uh, do not kitten and a, and a pets. kitten and a puppy are definitely. Yeah, but do we, I grew up with dogs. You know what I mean? Like that's all I've known. Like it, it's not a house unless you got a dog. So it's wild. Just part of it. Dogs are cool. Um, just we just wrapped up another 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 puzzle. Got a nice little Yoda jam. Damn y'all. Pick, pick that up. Um, yeah. Trying to send a picture. Uh, uh, that, and like he said, going to uh, watch that Army of the Dead. It was fun watch. It was it was fun having wings again. The man makes good wings, so wings in the movie is always a good time. Sounds like a hell of a yeah. time. Yeah, there are worse ways to spend an afternoon. That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah. My biggest regret of the night is I forgot to take a fucking what you call it the top uh, ice cream truck sandwich. Number one voted. Oh, uh, oh, the drumsticks. Drumsticks. He he had them. He offered. And I was like, no, I'm gonna get one at the end because you know, nice little dessert. And then I forgot. Yeah. Next thing you know, we left. And next thing you know, we're halfway home. And I'm like, no, <sighs> my drumstick. I don't have a fucking drumstick. This is bullshit. Almost turned around, but <laughs> <laughs> no one would have blamed you. Uh, the lady would have. She no. was ready to go to bed. Yeah, no, she would have blamed me real good. Um, I mean, other than that, nothing really much going on. Just got an email from the union saying, answer your fucking phone calls. We're about to get back to work. So <laughs> hopefully that, that email that you shared was like, yeah, guess what? We're doing this. Answer the phone. You don't have a fucking choice. Get up, you lazy piece of shit. We're going back to work. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Like, man, we've just been paying your insurance for the past fucking year and a half. You owe us now. So, but that'd Welcome be cool. back to the family, fuckheads. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready for it. And then um, tomorrow morning, we fly out to see the lady's family for a little bit. Uh, where are they at? Uh, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Somebody might go sneak into somebody's comic store. Ooh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, you can be there when uh -huh. Kelly opens? Like you can sneak in at night and then he comes I'm in the next day and you're like, boo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh my I'm going to hide in a box and have him unwrap me. Yeah. Oh I just God, look at I so just much. look at you. It doesn't even phase me that it's you. I just go, we didn't order yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> take it back. My like, God damn it, Diamond sent us the wrong <laughs> thing again. Diamond up to their shit again, guys. <laughs> uh, so fucking, all right. So Lunar. Yeah, what's up, Gilly? Tell us the story. So Lunar fucked us up, and this week, well, last week they didn't send us any of the Catwoman A covers that we ordered, and this week they didn't send us any of the Detective Comics main covers that we ordered. And so, you know, I uh, entered in the shortage, and today they send us an email like, hey, could you check the boxes and make sure those comics aren't in there? Like, fucking No. Uh, you think I need to look at the boxes again? You just go, yeah, hang on a second. Nope, not there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's sad that they can make Diamond look good. That uh, shouldn't be we possible. We didn't talk about it on the show. Um, it's a little bit old news now. We didn't talk about it on the show. What's this fucking nonsense with bad idea? comics kelly because you shared this and it it delighted me to no end how unbelievably fucking stupid that it is uh, so there is this comic company called bad idea comics and they're trying to be like who what someone explained it to me like they're trying to be like that supreme brand where it's like super exclusive and stuff like that and to carry their products they choose you you don't choose them so, like, they will email your store or call you and be like, hey, we want you to carry our stuff. But there's certain rules to it. 
Like you can only sell a customer a single copy of the book. Uh, you're not allowed to charge above cover price for, I believe, the first two <laughs> months the book is out. They can't read and, the book after midnight. Yeah, and there's some other stuff. And if they catch you breaking any of the rules, they will exile you from their list of distri- of stores. And don't get the book wet. Yeah. But they had this one comic, which I think came out last week or the week before, where it was to only be sold on Wednesday. That's it. One day. Any unsold copies you had on Wednesday, you were supposed to box up and mail to them that night. So here's the thing. Do this. Um, by the way, if you have any left over, here's some extra work. Yeah, exactly. I don't have that. I don't have enough time in my day to fuck around with that. Like, no, you can it's... you can wait. You can get these comics back when I have time to give them back to you. <laughs> Or I'll just sell the rest of them on Thursday, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Wait. What a ridiculous thing. Yeah. What a ridiculous fucking thing. I'm very glad they never even bothered to call us. <laughs> but I've never heard uh, an outfit named so appropriately before. <laughs> yeah. Fucking nonsense. Like, in all honesty, if they did call us, I'd probably say, no, you guys sound like too much work to deal with. <laughs> oh, my God. It sounds like so much fucking work. Like, yeah. so much of a hassle. It can't possibly be worth it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm too busy trying sell. to teach Penguin Random House how to ship comics and deal with, <laughs> like, the thousand other distributors I have to deal with. I absolutely think that the, these bad idea people should just be shunned. Just everyone yeah. should be like, you know what? You want to be rare? You want to have scarcity here's your scarcity none of us are gonna sell your shit yeah so open an etsy shop maybe you can sell it through Redbubble. Who, yeah who wants to make money selling comics less bad idea or action lab <laughs> <laughs> look if action lab loses you as a reader so what yeah. <laughs> the job not to sell comics i've i've definitely bought comics on etsy before and you know what Process is super smooth, works real easy. I get the comics I ordered shipped to my house. That's all I need. That was pretty fucking simple. Yeah. Yeah, didn't have to dick around or anything. Didn't have to worry that they weren't all in the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking there, yeah. Yeah, no, just... Super simple process. Ridiculous. Selling comics is real stupid, you guys. <laughs> well zero in the chat says it's this is one of his favorite segments of the podcast is kelly's comic oh. store well thank you <laughs> just wait until next week when he talks about when jose dropped out of the drop ceiling and scared <laughs> yeah. the shit out of him. Yeah. save bandit <laughs> i just can't wait for when jose is just walking out with a pile of boxes and no names is like no <laughs> You can't, you can't put that. But look at all this foam. <laughs> Where are you going to put that? It can be my carry-on. <laughs> Hang on. Fucking I'll beautiful. construct this box into a bag. <laughs> all right. Well, Lee, we got to talk about MODOK. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about MODOK for a second. Let's do all that. All right. So the MODOK show uh, popped up on Hulu on Friday. And I gotta say, that first episode fucking sucks. It's real tough. It's a it's a tough sit, that first episode. Yeah. But like, after I think that, I got, it you know, picks up. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta say, I agree. I, I watched three episodes total. Um, I think the last one is the one where he goes back in time to try to take his wife to see Third Eye Blind, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, like, oh, it's one of I those kind know... of shows, huh? I mean, it's not great yeah it's really not like it's it's very well crafted like everything looks really good and it's got a good voice cast like it's you know foundationally it's it's well produced but it's not exceptionally funny it's not exceptionally clever no you you get a decent joke every now and then yeah decent joke now and then but i think i don't know i can really tell that everyone making it likes it and they're having fun with it and 
you know, the plots are very silly and like they do a lot of weird deep cut Marvel shit. That's like, it's just, they're clearly having a good time with it. And that I think translates and makes it easy to watch. It's very hard to describe. Yeah. Like it's full of characters where I'm just like, Oh, I never thought I would ever see this person in a TV show. Yeah. I never I thought I'd Master see this. Person. Yeah. Pandemonium Master pandemonium and his fucking baby <laughs> hands. Yeah, has a talk show on TV. <laughs> yeah, he has a talk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, he slams his hands that are talking to him on the desk, and everyone's like, "Oh!" And he goes, "They're demons. Who cares?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it. Yeah, yeah. The shit like that is really fun. Yeah, like, like it's, it's the the armadillo shows up at one point. He's fun. Oh no, shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen. Uh, Wonder Man in one of the little preview images, so I know he shows up at some point. Oh yeah, he's a real dickhead. <laughs> Love it. I bet. I like bet. appropriately so. But yeah. yeah, no, it's like there's tons of just little deep cut characters, and it's like it's full of that Marvel Universe bullshit that makes me kind of love it. Like I can't yeah. say it's a good, sh- it's a great show, but I really, really liked it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I had it on last night when I was fucking around with some Legos. It's a great fucking around with lego shit oh yeah definitely because sure. every now and then you just look up and you just see like ah that's cool or nah that's funny and you go back yeah. to what you were doing yeah like yeah. he uh he, he loses aim to a hostile takeover of a google type company and so that's a lot of the stuff he's trying to get it back and trying to like you know look good for the board of directors and shit like that and it's like that's all fine whatever but it, it's all just a gateway to you know weird marvel bullshit which is fun there's one bit where I feel like if Mahoney watched it, he would say this has strong Kelly energy because there's a bit when Iron Man shows up and he goes to Modoc. He's like, why are you telling people I'm a wet bitch? And then Modoc <laughs> Modoc sprays him with one of those old timey <laughs> seltzer sprayers and he goes, wet bitch. <laughs> you know what? Uh, this show sounds right up my alley yeah so let me get this oh, yeah. straight. I let think me get you this like straight. It. yeah oh yeah so i think you would love it it's it's old-timey marvel characters doing absurd nonsense and i don't need to pay much attention to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think you would love sign it. sign me up <laughs> yeah modak's son is just john ralphio like that's just ben schwartz doing that character again but now he's a small boy <laughs> Yeah, and he's like a regular looking kid, but his daughter is all modocked up with the giant head and the hover chair and shit. And like, uh, they do an episode where he, they go to the like the leadership conference for the Grumble, which is like the tech company, or whatever. And uh, he wants everybody to like him, so basically his, his daughter teaches him like lunchroom politics. So he just like gaslights everyone in the crowd until like they want him to like him, which is a pretty fun little montage. Uh, it gets thrown to shit because he accidentally opens a. He tries to open a portal to the Brood home world. Oh, those so he fucking can save guys! Everybody. <laughs> he tries to open a portal to the Brood ho- Brood home world so he can save the day. People are like, oh yeah, look at this fucking hero Modok or whatever, you know, look, right? But instead, these weird like snail aliens come out of it, and like they just want like you know like their 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 touch is hallucinogenic and shit like that they just they want to make everybody like party themselves to death yeah, they just want to party and at one point one dude opens a <laughs> opens like a closet door he's like hey everybody you can have sex with them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the, somebody like throws a football through the portal and Modoc goes to get it and like every like the brood queen is dead having partied herself to death and shit like that like oh yeah i got it right the whole time turns out yeah. So yeah, it's Modoc, done. the first uh, Marvel property to have the Brood show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Brood and Master Pandemonium and yeah, uh, and Wonder Man. I don't know. Yep. And Third Eye Blind. Yep. And Third Eye Blind. <laughs> yeah, I love those snail guys. They they're just ready to party. Are Third Eye Blind snail guys? No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could be. They might be. I don't yeah. know enough we about don't... Third Eye Blind to know if that's true or not. They give me snail guys right now. Yeah, <laughs> I would not know. They might be yeah. made out of snails. I don't know. No fucking idea. Yeah, I think you would. I think you're right. I think you would love it, honey. Yeah, it yeah, really it's does right seem like up it's your alley. You. I'm all in. It's on Hulu. Yeah. All right. Yeah, awesome. it's your perfect brand of nonsense. 
yeah. then what isn't well, Mahoney's perfect brand of nonsense is right now when I turn this show into a wrestling podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I have been reading a book called The Way of the Blade, talking about 100 of the greatest bloody wrestling matches. Oh my a god. Book, okay. A book about bloody a wrestling book about matches. wrestling. There's been a ton of stuff that I've never seen before, so I've been adding stuff to my YouTube watch list left and right. Well, I, I guess that's cool to where you could look the match up after you read yeah. about it. but Because, yeah, the, the book is written in a, a format to where it goes through each each entry has three sections. One is the context for the match. The next is the combatants in the match, and then the match itself. So it's cool where it's like, okay, so you can... You get a full idea of, okay, here's everything I need to know going into this. And then you can go find it and watch it. Yeah, so I've been... I was watching a bunch of, like, 80s stuff. I found a really good Jerry Lawler versus Dutch Mantel barbed wire match. That was fun. What? Yeah. <laughs> because... They had tried to escape, run away from each other, or they couldn't be contained in the ring in their previous match. So this time around, what they did was they got them in the ring and then wrapped the ring itself in barbed wire to keep everyone in. Fucking Jerry Lawler in yeah. barbed wire matches. That's yeah. wild. Deathmatch legend, Me Jerry the King Lawler. Memphis no had some shit, right? crazy shit. Yeah, that was, that was a good match. Was Watch that in the height the... of his uh, heel sniffing? Yeah. <laughs> Watch the good old uh, Sergeant Slaughter versus Iron Sheik boot camp match. They both bleed buckets in there. It's pretty great. Even though I'd seen it before, I had to revisit the Magnum TA versus Tully Blanchard I Quit Cage match. Because that's a classic. Like That's that's one where it, it feels more like just a disgusting faces a death fight than it does a wrestling match because there's just Tully Blanchard screaming no while Magnum <laughs> oh is trying to, trying to shove a chair leg into his eye. Oh my god. Yeah, it's fucking brutal. It's like late 90s NWA. At one point, uh, Tully's valet throws a wooden chair into the ring and he just smashes it to get to grab a jagged piece of broken wood to s try and stab Magnum TA with it. <laughs> like, it's a brutal match. It's really good. Uh, That's let's see. I, I watched like um, from WCW Saturday Night Vader versus Cactus Jack. What I had that? never seen this before. This is the oh, year I've one? I've seen that match. It's... Woof, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. The one where... Cac where Mick Foley told him just punch me in the face a whole bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And the cut that I saw had the version with that that's unedited from Mick Foley's like personal library. Yep. Just fucking hounding away on his face. It looked like it sucked so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like because he wants to get cut open, but it just doesn't work. Yeah. So he's just getting punched in the fucking head over and over again. Yeah. Just pun he punched him in the mush so many times. And it's Vader. So yeah. Like, you know that fucking sucked. <laughs> yeah. Like, the entire experience just looked terrible all the way through. Awful. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I recommend it. Uh, Way of the Blade. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's 1995, I think, for physical. 9.99 for digital. I recommend the physical because each uh, listing ha or each entry has a illustration that goes with it. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, say so, yeah, I definitely recommend it. You'd, for sure, you'll find something you'd never seen or heard of before. Very cool. What you got going on, Mahoney? Oh, you know. Same old, same old, where uh, every day is a blur, and it feels like the same thing over and over and over again. Um, oh, my sweet boy. It's just the best. But someday, someday things will uh, things will settle down. Uh, work At some is point, still... your kids will move out of your house. Absolutely just off the walls. 
Um, but the pool is open and clean, and now my kids like to swim in that a whole bunch, which, you know, we have a heater, but, like, it's not exactly a pleasant experience just yet. Like, it's still pretty <laughs> chilly. But they like it because they're little, so we forced ourselves in there a few times, and that's a fun time. <laughs> um, what else is going on? I have done absolutely nothing. Like, all I do is uh, wake up, work, feed my children, put them to bed, and then play Fortnite with the Nises <laughs> and watch TikToks <laughs> until I fall asleep. Like, that's it. That's that's my life these days. Which, you know what? No complaints. Not that's a bad. good time. Yeah, yeah there's worse, there's a worse life existence Absolutely. to have. Absolutely. Uh, the Nyes Mahoney uh, squad forced them continues to just be a dominant force in the TikTok world. <laughs> um, in we, the TikTok we, world. We just... I mean, if we could take these talents and apply them to anything else, I'm right. sure we would destroy it. We would just crush it. Like, if we want to open a pizza place, best pizza place. If I'm we thinking want to, like, a, like, a, uh, like a, be since... a NASCAR pit crew, like best pit crew. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm thinking since it's... Uh, the, our two couples, we need to do like like an ABBA type musical group. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I bet we'd be amazing yeah. at it. It's it's, it's remarkable. Um, the stories all blur together because we win so much. But the other night we went through, and Nyes and I had like 15 kills between the two of us, <laughs> and like I think like 20 or something across the whole squad. Like it was, it's unbelievable. We yeah. just we, we didn't we finish, punish the people. We, like, we don't just murder one. them; we punish them. <laughs> we we got like 20 kills as a team. We didn't finish number one, but like it was just as good as a number one. Like yeah. We got wiped out by this squad that came out of nowhere that had like a. Uh, a hired NPC with them and we were like yeah well you're fucking welcome because we took out like the whole map <laughs> so congrats um I don't know that that's all I got going on I haven't watched anything in a while I'm I'm interested in this Army of Dead movie and I'm definitely going to watch Modoc, but I haven't watched any of it so I feel I'll like Army of Dead is probably a perfect put it on and not really pay attention to it type movie. Yeah. Sounds like a I'm shower movie if I ever heard one. <laughs> that is what I'm here for. <laughs> it's going to be a long ass If shower. I'm rinsing the shampoo out of my hair, am I going to miss anything? I mean, there are, there was one thing that we had to stop and rewind it because Jose was in the bathroom. But well, it was just because... What are the because... odds that that will happen at the point where I'm looking sure. away from the screen? You know, there's probably... Five or six really good, like, gory zombie moments in it that you wouldn't want to miss. But everything else, yeah, you could, you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. He does some cool shit, but it's not all groundbreaking. There is a zombie that wears a helmet and a cape. <laughs> all right. Okay. He, okay. He's like, like Evil Knievel? <laughs> it's almost like this is the story he brought to DC for Batman and they wouldn't let him do it so he went and did this movie instead kind of like a what when Frank Miller did what was that Holy one? Terror <laughs> Holy yeah. Terror this is Zack Snyder's Holy Terror yeah if Batman was king of the zombies <laughs> you know what I'm kind of into that <laughs> kind of cool. into that not gonna lie no, I mean it's a fun zombie movie it's fun kills it's a fun watch it's yeah. just you know he sets some stuff up and doesn't deliver on some of it they they make this huge point about a certain character and then like at the end of the movie you're like so what happened yeah and that that's a that's a real disturbing piece for me i think but i'm gonna still, like just fun. it's a fun watch it's a fun one thing i should mention while we're talking about fortnite or when we were talking about Fortnite, <laughs> is my five-year-old has fallen in love with Fortnite. And so if you are trying to play with me at any given time during the day that is not after 9 p.m., it's not me, okay? <laughs> it's a five-year-old. He doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't know what buttons he's clicking. So, like, the other day I jumped on and Jax was like, hey, I played Fortnite with you today and you didn't even do anything. You just stood there. Yeah, that's not me. That's a five-year-old. So just... 
Don't God. worry about it. He was, I gotta tell him because he was so fucking pissed yesterday. He came in, he was like, Is that Mahoney was in the lobby, but he wouldn't join, and I couldn't join, and he was there, and just nothing was happening, and I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it's not Whoa. me. It's all <laughs> Will. <laughs> There's nothing you're saying that's worth the level of upset I see on your face. It is all Will. He, who, let me tell you, loves himself some Fortnite, but does not know what a party invite is, doesn't have a mic, <laughs> can't talk to any of you, doesn't know what's going on. So, don't yeah, get mad at me. Once he me. figures that out, let me know, and I will jump on there with him, and we'll play <laughs> yeah. Fortnite all day. But also, if you want to play with me and I don't want to play, it wasn't me, it was totally Will. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Mahoney, we can hear you, we're chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No, I'm well. <laughs> we got on the classic this week, guys. Ah, shit! I didn't put the number. Oh, okay, it's uh. So because of our topic tonight, we're doing top six restaurant chains, top six chain restaurants. Uh, I went through our archives to see if we had any cool stories about restaurant chains, and found this one. It's a whopper. I had to trim it down because originally it was like 18 minutes long. I got it down oh, to damn. 10 minutes. It's uh, Jose's story about trying to get. A McSpicy chicken in the <laughs> Delhi airport, and uh, yeah. it, it's something. It's it's after he uh, did Pune Comic Con by his by himself, and he was trying to get home, and he was all by his lonesome, and he just wanted some food in the airport. <laughs> and this is this is his journey. I love this journey for him. All right. Well, enjoy this tale, and we'll be back in a little bit. Love you. Bye. Enjoy the refreshing taste of an ice cold popcast classic. I was pretty hungry by the time I got to the airport at around six. So the plan was go to the duty free, use the rupees on the monkey shoulder, use my card to get something to eat, <laughs> go to the gate, wait for my flight because I, I had like three hours, get on the flight and begin my journey home. No. <laughs> oh no <laughs> no this turned into the biggest fucking goddamn two and a half hour ordeal i have ever fucking been through trying to eat and not just trying to eat but trying to have mcdonald's <laughs> like i just i have never been through oh. this much problem to get mcdonald's so i buy the monkey shoulder use I all my this ruby. story already yeah no shit. Hit the escalator, go up to the McDonald's, <laughs> order a McSpicy chicken sandwich meal, brings it up, give him my card. It doesn't fucking take. It get, it gets declined. And I, and I had this problem the other day, and it just kept getting declined. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Now, what I'm wearing this camera bag. It's imagine piggybacking a kid yeah. all day. It's <laughs> it's sixty God. it's sixty pounds if it's an ounce. Oh. So when I'm walking carrying all of that for long periods of time, I get McCranky. <laughs> you know, it just kinda happens. I get a little McCranky. So I'm already pissed that I've already had to go up the escalator to a place that I can't eat now. I just want to eat. I'm fucking starving. I'm kind of drunk. <laughs> so I go back down the fucking escalator. And I go to look for, for a cart. Because unlike here in the States, baggage carts are free. You just grab one and you put your shit on it. Oh, God, well, they should be. And you use it. Because the airports are fucking big. You know, it's a long goddamn trek. And I'm sweating. And I'm hot. And I'm drunk, and I want to go home, <laughs> and I'm at the airport, and the shit's heavy, and I'm drunk, and the shit's heavy. <laughs> so I finally find a cart, so I put everything on the fucking cart. Okay, well, my card doesn't work. I'm all out of rupees. All I have is American. I'll just go to the fucking money exchange and change out the money. Just give me fucking 500 rupees so I can go get a fucking McSpicy ticket. <laughs> That's all I want. So I wait in line. The lady in front of me 
goes up. She's talking to the guy, and she turns around to me and says, "He's eating now, so we have to wait while he's on his lunch." Just sitting at the, he just stops working, grabs his food, and just starts eating at the counter. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> no, no, God. like, no, like, you know, shift change, no, nothing. Just I'm not going to listen to you right now, and I'm going to eat my rice real quick. So when I'm done, then then we can work. And I'm fucking so McCranky right now. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? I just want a goddamn chicken sandwich. That's all I want. So I, I was like, fuck it. There's got to be another change thing around here. So we walk all around, walk by all the stores, go all around, go all around, end up back by the security. And I'm like, okay, there's not. <laughs> So I'm like, fuck, gotta go back to goddamn Captain Lunchtime. So I fucking <laughs> throw my shit back over there. There's two people ahead of me. I get up in the line. I take out uh, uh, $50 American to get $500 rupees. Give me the rest back in American. I just want 500 rupees. The meal is like 300 That way I got 200 to play with if I want to get crazy and get a drink before I get on the plane. <laughs> this motherfucker looks at me and goes, "No Indian rupees." <laughs> what? what is the fuck does that mean? What do you mean, no Indian rupees? He's like, "We're we're not doing that right now. We're not giving out Indian rupees." It's like you're a fucking change counter. That's your job. That's In all India. you're supposed to be. Doing. <laughs> you have one job, and you're telling me you you don't do that job right now. You don't fucking that and i was like well where am i supposed to get them how am i supposed to go get something and he says you don't (laughs) (laughs) he said mick fucking what what are you talking about so i fucking walk off and if you thought i was cranky before now i'm fucking starving you're telling me i i have no way of getting food I can't get food for another two hours. I've already wasted one hour. Bear on mind, a- this is the cheapest, most garbage food in the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I'm I, I am fighting for it so hard. I just I am so hungry. <laughs> My car doesn't work. There's no ATM. And even if there was an ATM, it probably won't accept my card anyways. My other bank card won't take. None of the cards are working. I have no fucking rupees. Nobody takes American dollars. The guy that's supposed to exchange my shit says, no, we don't do that right now. And I just want to eat. So I'm fucking like pacing in a circle trying to figure out (laughs) how to eat. Because it's two hours till we board, which means it's another two hours till they actually serve a meal. Is this all an elaborate story about the time Jose turned tricks in the (laughs) Delhi airport? (laughs) So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to the duty free and I'm going to see if I can return the monkey shoulder and get back my money in rupees (laughs) and then buy the monkey shoulder in American. So I have rupees and I'm like, run the whole, the story by the guy. And he's like, okay, let's see what we can do. And they fucking go for it. (laughs) Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Got it. So they they <laughs> refund the monkey shoulder, pay with the American. So so now I still got my my liquor. That's still intact. Now I got my rupees. Now I can fucking eat. I got my cart <laughs> with all my shit in there. I'm not lugging anything around. I'm free as a bird. I hit the elevator. I go up the stairs. I fucking strut up to McDonald's. <laughs> I say, let me get a McSpicy chicken combo, please. And he says, we're closed right now. All the registers are down. <laughs> Oh my god. Dude, their fucking shift change. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You're fucking me closed. I just want to eat. <laughs> so I wait. Like, by, by this point, I'm so pot committed, I refuse to eat anything else that is on that fucking floor of food court. There's a subway am, literally three stalls down. <laughs> there's a Domino's, there's a sandwich place, there's a curry chicken, there's a hot spicy Me Too yogo, there's a fucking restaurant, but 
I am dead set. I will not let this day deprive me of my fucking McSpicy McChicken God. goddamn value meal that I know in the back of my head this sandwich is going to suck. <laughs> the only thing I'm really going to enjoy are the fries. Oh but I do it anyway. So I sit after like 15, 20 minutes. Now, I've, now by now, it's I'm like two hours into this fucking journey trying to get food. They open up their registers, but they don't really announce it properly. So <laughs> everyone just rushes in. God. So now I'm in the back of the fucking line. I was the first one there. So I'm like, ah. Wait <laughs> my turn. Order my sandwich. Get my food. Walk over to where you sit. And it's a pain in the ass to get over there because the fucking front wheel of this cart keeps fucking looping to the right. So I'm trying to, I got McDonald's in one hand and I'm trying to push with the other hand and I'm almost ramming into everybody sitting down. And I finally fucking make it over. And right as I'm standing there, I hear this huge splash behind me. And I turn around and this guy's just wearing his hot coffee on his fucking white shirt. <laughs> I said, you know what? I guess things could be worse. So I fucking, <laughs> I sat down, I enjoyed my fucking food, went, ordered another large fry for the road, <laughs> went to my gate, chilled for 20 minutes, got on that plane, and fucking dipped the fuck out. Started from the bottom, now he's here. Oof. <laughs> Nothing quenches your thirst quite like a podcast classic. <laughs> A little longer than was, our usual podcast classic, but it gave me a chance to go to the freezer and get our number one ranked ice cream truck treat, a drumstick, and eat that during the entire podcast classic. Yeah, boy. It was wild times right there. That's an that awful good. fucking story. Yeah. Like, it, I, I was getting mad all over <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's. Like that fucking Walmart story that just happened to me a couple of weeks ago. Just, just, everything was closed. I just don't understand. Like, if you were at the at an airport in India, and the currency exchange is like no Indian rupees, like what the fuck are you even doing there? <laughs> like, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, they're like, no, 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 we don't want that back. Like, we want that American. It's like you land at JFK. They're like, no dollars. <laughs> what do you mean, no <laughs> dollars? <laughs> fucking yeah. nonsense. Well, this was also was it. The year, okay, so this was Pune, so this was February. Was this the February before those few Indian India shows that we did later that fall where the rupee I mean, it had, had gotten been like, before. It, yeah, but did, there was some shit that went on with the rupee later that year where there was they dark money. They discontinued the money because they were trying to get rid of all, all that counterfeit. Right, right, right. Oh, wow. Right. So, so wow. like. We knew we were coming back, so we didn't exchange our rupees because we had, you know, why exchange the money just to re-exchange it when we go back in two weeks. And then in that week, oh, no, this was after the Trump thing, wasn't it? We were home. Well, we. And then when we went back, they were like, sorry, they announced that this current, like the fives, 20s and 50s or something like that were discontinued. Yeah. Will issue you new dollar bills if you exchange it because they were trying to get people who are stashing cash. Like, we'll get your money, we'll exchange it. You may have to explain why you're bringing me so much. Mm -hmm. That's weird, man. All right. So then, um, but then they, they they announced this and then closed the banks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, if you guys noticed, but uh, our. Year or two of telling stories about India. You know, the people that we worked with at Comic Con India, they were great people. But uh, India, uh, no disrespect, a little sketchy. <laughs> 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 little on the sketch side. You know, there was that one uh, Delhi Comic Con where the uh, local police basically shook them down. Yeah. They're like, um. We got our cut, but that was before we realized how big this was, right. how much money you guys are making. So let's go ahead and re 
Let's relook at all. Yeah, this. I think you guys need to apply for new permits, and that'll those will be oh my uh, god a few thousand rupees. Yeah, in, in cash and this was please. like the last day of the show, so we were supposed to just go home, like drinks, party, shut it down. Nope. They said, we'll do this another day. Wild they time. misunderstood, <laughs> shut it down, and thought you said shakedown. <laughs> Break down. You're busted. <laughs> All right. There are some good times there, but definitely sure. some uh, qu- questionable moments. Yeah. My favorite like story is the, uh, the New Orleans. The driving test where they have, like, at the end, this big piece of concrete, and the only way to pass the driver's test is you have to get up to the other side of the concrete but unless you bribe the dude he's not moving the concrete for you to get to the other side <laughs> are you shitting me wait oh. what yeah <laughs> yeah like bribes that's how it runs <laughs> and it's just known just that's how shit rolls dude at least it's out in the open in india you know in the yeah. u.s it's yeah, all yeah. you know like it's the covert. same thing here it, we just pretend that it's not happening. It doesn't happen, and we don't know who's doing yeah. it. But it's the same shit. We call it They're bureaucracy. More... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We just call it the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> they That's call it give insane. fuck you, pay me. <laughs> yeah, but they told us that story, and I thought that was just the most amazingly wild shit ever. <laughs> That's fucking nuts. It's amazing. We we made it back alive. I was always <laughs> those two trips that Jose took on his own. I was so worried because come on, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweet little baby. You guys have I met him. <laughs> I'm gonna end up in some somebody's uh, shipping container. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god, you're gonna be a sheik's wife. Hey, but you know what? <laughs> It'd be a swell of a fucking story. Yeah, it would. It would be at least a 10-minute podcast classic. Whew. Like, remember Jeez that time Christ. I was uh, taken? married and, <laughs> yeah, I was taken, woke up, I was somebody's wife. <laughs> the time I got tooken? <laughs> <laughs> to forkin. Good times. Oh, my God. All right. Let's hop on the top six, nice. One, two, three, four, five. Six, six, six. <laughs> Top six. Six! I still like six. All right. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but aside from being an educational podcast and a wrestling podcast, we're also a food podcast. Yes. I think it goes to hats. Wrestling podcast, priority one. Yeah. Food podcast, and then way further down, educational podcast. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like people learn something every episode. I think educational. Yeah, I put educational a little more higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you can yeah. put that in the tag for each show. Educational. Does it go above or below comic podcast? Above. Way above <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Way above. All right. Uh, so this week we're doing top six uh, chains, which for reasons I'll never fucking understand was apparently very complicated in the Discord. <laughs> there was a lot of discussion <laughs> Did and did not constitute. Uh, what, what was allowed to be on this list? Someone was like, "Hey, there's no rules." I'm like, "Okay, generally speaking, yeah, there's not a lot of rules, but like chain restaurants, like that's that's the rule. Like, you know, you fucking come me with like, you know, Mel's down the road and get the fuck out of here. That's not how that works." <laughs> They're like, I don't know any restaurants that got no chains. I don't. <laughs> all my restaurants have zero chains on the doors. They just have regular locks. Yeah. <laughs> You got the shady restaurants you got with chains on them. (laughs) Is Hamburger wearing bootleg Jordans? No, he He stole those fair and square. Huh. I mean, they're they are like bootleg looking like tennis shoes. I I wouldn't say Jordans, but yeah, they definitely look like they're supposed to be some sort of Nike. Hamburgers, Hamburglers wearing bootleg legs. He looks like he's (laughs) looks like he's a cardboard cutout. I haven't seen the Hamburglar in a while, anything kind of like McDonald's official. Uh, and that reminds me, have you guys seen the Domino's commercials where they brought back the Noid? Yeah, they did bring oh, no. back the Noid. Oh, they brought back the Noid, y'all, which is great. Be- for if for no other reason than I hope more people learn the story about why the Noid went away in the first place. <laughs> because it's fucking amazing. 
if you don't know, real quick, uh, Domino's Pizza in the late 80s, early 90s had the Noid character, this weird like, little rabbit guy. Like, I don't know what the fuck he's supposed to be. He even had like a Nintendo game. He was like popular as shit. Yeah. And that's fine. He was he was he was he was great. Everybody loved him, except for one guy um, who thought that the Noid commercials were targeting him, targeting him uh, specifically. Um, is this guy? His name was something that was like you know Noid adjacent, like his name. His name was like Greg Noid or some shit. Yeah, I think his last and, name was Noid. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Kenneth uh, Lamar Noid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, something like that. But so he got fucking whacked out, you know, as, as you know, seeing them dominoes openly mock him on television. Uh, so he fucking went to his local Domino's pizza and took the whole goddamn place hostage. <laughs> and so there was a whole standoff, this whole crazy thing. And so after all that nonsense, the uh, Domino's is like, I think maybe we should put the Noid on ice for, mm. I don't know, approximately 25 years. <laughs> it's fucking insane. Uh, not as it. salacious a story, but they uh, stopped using the Robbler, which Jose calls him the Robbler. Uh, they stopped <laughs> yeah. using the Hamburglar because of the childhood obesity uh, epidemic. They're like, we don't need to have this character stealing hamburgers like. We don't need kids emulating that. They're already fat enough as it is. That's fucking dumb. Like, like okay, here's the thing. We'll stop using the hamburger, but we'll actually do nothing to the content of our food. Well, I mean, you, know, they, you know what's interesting about the hamburger? Her, I cannot say this name. Just say Robbler. Hamburglar is he's the only one of these motherfuckers who runs. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're trying to you're canceling him because of childhood obesity. He's the only one exercising. Yeah. Ronald McDonald does like all kinds of sports in the commercials. Ronald yeah. McDonald is, he and doesn't it's, count. It's not truly. They added fruit and milk to the Happy Meals. Oh, that's yeah, true. That's they're true. healthy now. Yeah. Oh, and a follow up to the Noid story. Uh, Noid dude killed himself. At the end. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's yeah. why they brought it back. They were like, oh, thank God. He's yeah. gone. Now we can. Yeah. Mer- I- imagine if Domino's went just all the way in. Right. And they just. They were like, Domino's. Fuck Kelly Harass. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he, uh, when he was holding them hostage, he got hungry, so he made the workers make him two pizzas. Two special pizzas. And, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, two special uh, pizzas. And while he was eating the every pizzas. every kind of fucking pizza you got. Yeah. Like, he put go. down his gun, and they ran away. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. Yeah, so now the Noid uh, is in a Crash Bandicoot mobile game and new commercials. It's fucking insane. Love it. All that is to say, top six uh, chain restaurants. So I'm going to throw a shout out to um, the Taco Bell of the past because Taco Bell now has seven items on the menu and none of them are the one you want. Aww. It's yeah. But they have all the components to make the one you want. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to like <laughs> make some kind of crazy ass special order and cost you $14 for the burrito that you used to get for like, you know, four, you can do that, I guess. Very odd. I don't know what the hell they were doing over there. So RIP decent Taco Bell menu. You are missed. Um, I feel like anytime you go to Taco Bell, you have some kind of problem, too. Yeah. I once sat in a uh, Taco Bell drive through for half an hour. That's a long time. I once went to a Taco Bell, and they told me they were at a taco meet. <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's, uh, the I was, only, that's what you fucking know for. What do you have? I once worked at a Taco Bell, taco Bell and we ran out of Taco Meat one night. It was a dark, dark time <laughs> was we a, did not know there was a basketball tournament there was like a high school basketball tournament in town and we didn't know and so we just got fucking wrecked by all these teens wanting their tacos and we ran out of that shit it was scary times so uh, for my list proper i didn't want to double dip a whole lot on the uh, on uh, genres of foods mm-hmm. you know like i want to keep mm-hmm. it keep it unique um so i think that your best Burger place is probably going to be a Five Guys burger. Agreed. I love the Five Guys experience. Um, for wings, it's a little played out, a little fucking basic, but I like a Buffalo Wild Wing. I like all you. you I like if you go in there at the right time, you can watch a fight on the TV, on all the screens and shit like that. You can play some trivia. Uh, they got a shitload of sauces. A bunch of them are actually pretty fucking good. 
uh you know you get them uh they, they got they got fried pickles and shit too good apps and actually and if you want to get nuts they got decent burgers too shit, so yeah their I burgers are shockingly wings. good yeah like they you wouldn't think they'd be that fucking rad but they're pretty good and then i figured you kind of have like like one of those kind of just general you know restaurant type things and so i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna say chilies because Chili's. Uh, yeah, man. I like. I like. They, they got the, the chili's ribs are pretty good. Uh, they got this meal that's all these meats and shit like that, and it's got this pretty kick ass uh, jalapeno cheddar sausage. Yes, pretty yes. Good. It's like a barbecue Especially, platter. Yeah, it's fucking good. You can get like you know brisket and ribs. You get like brisket and half a slab of ribs, the sausage and like corn on the cob and toast. It's like twenty bucks or some shit like that. It's yeah. pretty fucking good. Uh, and then we're talking Asian style chain shit. I'm gonna go PF Chang's because why not? You know, you know, it's a good crowd pleaser. Got all your classics. Although they're gonna bring all your rice out in one big bowl that annoys the shit out of me. But you know, you can dole it out. It's fine. <laughs> and uh, for sandwiches, get the fuck out of my face with the subway. If any one of you motherfuckers has subway on your list tonight, you're dead to me because. It is objectively the worst sandwich place. <laughs> like it's fucking horrendous. Yeah, Subway ain't um, good. It's the fucking worst. So, uh, but if you can find yourself around a witch witch, go into ah, a witch witch. Ah, yes. Wonderful fucking sandwiches. Uh, and I don't know if it's just a northern thing or if they have them around here. I haven't seen one. Uh, but a pot belly sandwich, also very good. Uh, they have a sandwich they call the Wreck, which is a very, very good sandwich at Potbelly's. Potbelly so. you can find in a lot of airports, I've noticed. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe need to travel more and give me some good sandwiches. <laughs> I love a good Potbelly sandwich. Uh, and then, you know, you can't talk about chain restaurants and not talk about Portillo's. Portillo's makes the number one spot in a heartbeat. It's, oh, you know. I can't believe I forgot Portillo's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know of anywhere else that you're gonna go that's gonna have like like every menu item is a fucking banger. Like everything's good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Portillo's yeah. has some of the best tamales I've ever had. Tamales. Tamales. <laughs> Portillo's of yeah. all fucking places. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It was so hard to only pick one thing off of their little preview menu because it's like I want all of it. But then on the way home. I don't feel like I want to kill myself because I'm stuffed, stuffed <laughs> with nine hot dogs, yeah. of, a beef with Italian sausage in it, and a tamale. And it's like, oh, so this is what like moderation feels like. I, I yeah. like it. This is what a meal should be. <laughs> Look at me go. But it's like, yeah, you know, man, we so like rarely get Portillo's. It's usually when we're up. You got to load up. Yeah. Like, we have to take a two-hour trip to Brandon to get Portillo's. You want to shove it all in your face ASAP. Yeah, store that shit for the winter and keep the memories intact. Yeah, I, I totally. I can almost understand why Jose would forget about it because it almost doesn't feel like a chain because they're so few and far between, yeah, we, especially we down the, here. The access. To yeah. It. Yeah, we're heading out to uh, Illinois in a couple of weeks, and uh, I'm gonna have so much portillos while we're there, you guys. It's gonna be so good. Mm, yes. So good. So good, Portillo's. Mary joked about leaving Portillo's and swinging by the White Castle drive through and I was like, don't you joke. Don't <laughs> oh, you <that's>... joke. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's real fucking cute until yeah. we're queued up for two hours for some sliders. <laughs> we, got a, we got a dog at home. <laughs> yeah. You got a shit everywhere. Fucking great. All right, so what we got uh, on the Discord, Kelly? Start us off. Uh, we got someone... Who is in my phone and I unlock it and it's Juan. <laughs> hey! Juan says shout out to Arnold's, Los Pollos, the Peach Pit, the Max, and the Double R Diner. Oh, those are my all di- TV. Right. These are all fake, right? Because all... I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And I was like, these are all fake. Peach Pit is from 90210. Los Pollos is from Breaking Bad. Arnold's is from Happy Days. The Max is from Saved by the Bell. I don't know what the Double R Diner is, though. No. Probably MASH. Mash. Yeah, I gotta be mash. <laughs> hey, yo, Jose, what's the theme song for Double R Diner? <laughs> there it is. 
For a second, I thought he was going into the Jurassic Park theme. <laughs> 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 I'm flexible. Uh, Juan says, my diet pretty much consists of chicken tender meals, so these are based on each restaurant's meals where I think of value, taste, and how many fries come with it. So fucking weird. Number six, Buffalo Wild Wings. Good tenders, great trivia games to play while you wait. Uh, sometimes a bit too long of a wait, hence the number six. Fries are good and beer on tap is reasonable. Uh, number five, Applebee's. Wings. Good tenders, decent amount of fries, happy hour drinks. Applebee's has... you said Applebee's! Applebee's. Applebee's has become the punchline bad restaurant in recent years. See, now, to be fair, I don't think I've been at an Applebee's in 20 years. So, like, for all I know, it could be wonderful. I remember Eating good in the neighborhood. One time it- having a bomb ass blue cheeseburger at an Applebee's, and I was chasing that forever. Yeah, I used to get the burger. Applebee's started cake. doing those neon glow nights. Okay. Like some of the Applebee's. What, like a, was that Applebee's? Like a foam party? <laughs> I was like, like, wait. No, that was, where, where, a, that was a bowling the... alley near me. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. It was... Where did No Name's ex roommate work? Yeah. Uh, was where was the place party? where you bowl the strike and then like, the, the radishes come on the screen and congratulate you? <laughs> yeah, that was Applebee's. Yeah, no, it was that. No, they added like a fucking disco glow night where it was almost like a fucking rave. They went glow in the dark, moved some tables, you could dance. Fucking like that's when they were trying to save themselves. Batman movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, one continues. Did. Number four, Chili's. The one place where I do not tell them to double up on fries when offered the choice of two sides. One of them sides is corn on the cob there. I don't know what it is about the corn on the cob there, but it is buttered the way I like it, and the seasoned salt is perfect on it. Mm. So when I, yeah, I like. When I was a kid, uh, we went to Chili's once, and we didn't go again for years because uh, they put, like you know, they put seasoning on the ear of corn on the corn, and it was like pepper or something. And it was too spicy for my little baby mouth, and it made me cry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so we didn't go return to Chili's for years. How old were you here, Kelly? <laughs> maybe five, maybe. He's like 24. Yeah, <laughs> this is like two He's... years ago. Uh, last week. <laughs> Remember being such a little kid that you couldn't handle anything that was... Even the slightest bit spicy, like pepper. Yeah. 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 My kids will not go anywhere near pepper. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That corn fucked me up. <laughs> uh, number three. It's, it's a real white person moment when your oh, kids yeah. look at you and are like, this pepper is too spicy. And you're like, this is black pepper. It's not too spicy. My tongue, it burns. Yeah. Uh, number three, IHOP. The tenders here are fantastic as the fries. Uh, number two, okay. Denny's. The tenders are pretty much the same as IHOP here. What edges Denny's, though, is the Denny-saurus dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets. Sure, as a kid, you're always told not to play with your food because you will never get around to eating it. But as an adult, you know you can play with your food and then eat it, too. And number one, Red Robin. Two words, bottomless fries. I get my tendies and look at the server, and I simply tell them, don't even ask if I want more fries. You just keep bringing them until I say stop. (laughs) Those steak fries with the seasoned salt that they have is such a great sensation in my mouth. Juan going to Red Robin like it's a Brazilian steakhouse with a little card. No, it still says green. Keep bringing the fries. Red Robin server must just be like, okay, buddy. Whatever you say, Mr. Frontman. Fries Magoo is back, everybody. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but if, you're not, if you're going to Denny's and not getting a moons over my hammy, what are you doing? Denny's. Well, there's moons Number over my hammy the chicken tender? Denny's. One time no, you I want to talk to about Denny's somewhere I haven't been in 20 years. I haven't been to a Denny's in 20 years. but I went to Denny's a bunch of years ago and saw an old man pick up his hooker there. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. That seems like a real good... Denny's move. I yeah, think. they yeah. were sitting opposite sides of each other. They didn't seem to know each other, and then suddenly he he moved to her side of the bench, 
And then they just left without finishing their food. Yep. They just worked some shit out. They said, oh, that's what you do for work. There was a period of time where I only ever went to Denny's between the hours of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Yeah. And that's what you do. That's prime Denny's time. And once the sun comes up, you go to Perkins like a human. Hell yeah. (laughs) I don't know if I told the story, but on the road once we watched like there was like a whole business, you know, at the end of the bar, they just got down with some business conference, some shit, and then just watched a lady of the night work the bar and figure out who she's who who's taking her. Mm-hmm. So the guy, he was like, so how does this work? And then she left with somebody else. Ah, was that you? No. Uh-oh. Fucking ask too many questions. Yeah. Gentlemen don't uh, pay and tell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That well, was... How many dollars does it take for you to put your mouth on my wiener? <laughs> <laughs> Zero in the chat says the best thing at Denny's is it's open. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I, I just not can't imagine Denny's a... is number two. Like, number two? Like, listen, I know... I, to I, be fair, I, I am not a chicken tender connoisseur, so maybe he's right. I don't know. I guess. I get. Ma'am, ch- would I, you like to so- swallow my sausage if you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I also can't imagine a grown man playing with dinosaur-shaped chicken and not being not calling the cops immediately. <laughs> so I don't know. I bet that's the least weird thing they have happen at Denny's. <laughs> yeah. yeah One. I, feel, I feel like as long as someone's not picking up a table and throwing it at someone else, Denny's is pretty cool yeah. with whatever. Yeah, as long as your dick is in your pants, Denny's is like, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> go off, queen, whatever you gotta do. Juan Fine. finishes his denny and then yells, car ride! <laughs> <laughs> We have fun. All right. We do have fun. All right. Vetter writes in, and he says, uh, uh, Mama loves house of orange juice brownie batter. (laughs) (laughs) Orange juice brownie batter. (laughs) Uh, Now, Vetter says, I'm going to take the unhealthy route and focus on change with a drive-thru, since that was the only option for a while this past year. Well, yeah. I mean, we we forgot to mention that part of the reason we wanted to do this list is uh, because of, you know, the past year, you know, we – COVID has been hard, especially for people in the food service in- industry. We want to just send out, send out some love to the essential workers out there in the food service industry who just have not been getting much love and have to deal with all of our asses and do not get paid well. No, nope, people tell like shit. Yeah. Sorry, Lee. Continue. Gnarly. That's all good. Uh, number six, Sonic. Love some tots and the cherry limeade is the best in the business. Best drink selection in the game. Good. And I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah. Sonic's got the best drink game for sure. Yeah, they're cherry limeades, Rock. Those those tots are yeah. legit. Yeah, legit tots. Uh, breakfast all the time. You can get those uh, Sasha Toshers at fucking 6 p.m. if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, for a few weeks there, me and Mary were getting the, the big-ass breakfast burritos, but then we found out yeah, Sonic buddy. was one of the companies that fought against the uh, $15 minimum wage, so haven't been back since. I mean, mm. every corporation is evil. Sure. Uh, they closed down the Sonic by my house, so I'm, I'm with you in solidarity, nice. I'm not going <laughs> yeah, Sonic go. anymore. Uh, number five, White Castle. I get that grave. My wife can't stand it, so it's pretty much an on-the-go uh, when I'm alone deal. There you go. Number four, Taco Bell. I can't put Chipotle on here. This is my taco slash burrito joint. I still feel like you can get a pretty good amount of food for your dollar. Uh, second best drinking game in the biz. Hell yeah. You can leave Taco Bell and spend $20 and have four bags of food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> number three, Chick-fil-A. The pickle is what does it for me. And that frosted lemonade. And as far as drive throughs go, you will never find a more efficient and faster run operation anywhere. I have a bone to pick with the Chick-fil-A drive through especially oh, during shit. COVID. Do they, they're doing the thing where they have the people like standing outside, right? Yes, that's fucking yeah. stupid. It's I hate stupid. it. It's stupid. And it's dangerous. It's unnecessary. 
and also like yeah but it's gotta be necessary i mean they gotta see a benefit in how it moves the line for them to do it ah man i, I don't think they would just do it because it doesn't work i'd rather wait I mean, longer you than you want to talk about how efficient the chick-fil-a line is it's because of how they do because it. also you don't get to look at the menu they just have that little like right like, like uh like uh John Madden well, card. Yeah, but I mean, it's Chick Fil A. Yeah, they but got also, like, I want to look at the menu. Let me look at the fucking menu. I don't know if there's something new. I don't know if I don't know what number but I again, want. Again, it's Chick Fil A. Like, when's the last time? Sure. Something new. But with like COVID, you know, I'm used to pulling up ordering. When I'm done ordering, I put my mask on when I pull up to the window. But with fucking Chick Fil A, you pull up and it's like, here's a person immediately. Yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, and, I feel like with the you should be dealing with as few people as possible. Yeah, yeah. and Chick Fil A in person. Ch if you go through the Chick Fil A drive through, you're dealing with at least three people, if not five. Yeah, that's a lot. It's too much. I mean, they're paying people, they're employing people, but I don't know, man. Not a not a fan. We have not been back to Chick Fil A since I had a really bad drive through experience. <laughs> Love uh, this. But no, you've been here though. recently, Nice. Number two, Arby's. Hell yeah. The five for oh, five. Hell yeah. They have the meat. And garbage. And they got all the meats. Uh, the curly fries and cheddar are the best. It's nice to have a sandwich option as well as instead of burgers. Uh, and then number one, there's eh, a dark horse, KFC. 100% biased since I worked at one forever, but those 11 herbs and spices never get old. Give me four extra crispy wings, a handful of hot sauce packets, and some mac and cheese, and I'm a happy customer. Oh, man. Uh, last time I ate at fucking KFC, I bit into my chicken sandwich and it was raw. Oh, so that is a like you know how nightmare. when it's tough and like you're you go to bite and your teeth just like go left to right, they oh. but don't go through it. Uh. And I took it to the dude and he looks at me like, "What do you want?" And I told him, <laughs> "I want what I ordered, but fucking cooked." Yeah. And oh. then you know they remade it, and I was oh. like, "Man, eh, you know what?" Keep it. I'm fucking. I'm done. Yeah, I want not salmonella, please. Yeah, I would like chicken that's cooked. Like, how do you not cook the only thing you guys do? Remember that period of time when they had those honey barbecue strips, though. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Remember when they made a chicken sandwich out of chicken? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. That was a the balls on them. That was a real dark time in our country. <laughs> I had a few of those things though. The good yeah, old double I mean, down. They weren't horrible. No, they were not horrible at all. Just a real bad idea. That was some. Was some it all the comments on a Wednesday? Though? Well, yeah, because you needed a bun to it, it, it absorb the heat. It was so fucking hot to hold the damn thing. It was awful. Well, yeah, you but you know, it was still good. It was keto. Oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, totally keto. Yeah, I'm, too keto. I'm on. I'm on the double down diet. <laughs> 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 what you got jose all right uh shout out to the chains that while growing up paid some of my bills shout out to glorias no longer exists little hawaiian joint uh work there under the table as a wee little uh 11 to 12 year old just making that money washing dishes wow. busting, busting tables I started working early. Started working and banging at a very early age. That's what happens when you have a full mustache. <laughs> um, shout out to Smoky Bones, a oh. defunct Darden barbecue joint. Yeah, Smoky uh, Bones is so good. Pretty good fucking barbecue, though. Smoky Bones like, Smoky I think, defunct now? They're gone? There's a couple that, that are left. Darden sold them to somebody else, and they closed a majority. They're still, they're still maybe like a handful, but for the most part, Smoky Bones doesn't exist. I think Smoky Bones was the first place where I was exposed to pulled pork. Oh, they did. They did fucking good. And they pork, did the yeah. cinnamon like The platters were pretty... Pretty giving. I took yeah. Lee's wife to a Smoky Bones just to get the donuts one time when she was visiting Orlando. <laughs> oh, yeah, that little dessert <laughs> gimmick was pretty good. Um, and then shout out to Logan's. Uh, crazy. Oh, shit, I was talking about there. Logan's in forever. Uh, well, that's where I was working when we got raided. Yeah, there was a, a period of time where... Night. Everyone in our friend group besides myself worked at this one Logan's Roadhouse. 
Yeah, my favorite game was throwing the peanuts up into the. We'd play like baseball. You just throw peanuts up into the fan, and then we're, <laughs> when it shot out, like you know what I mean. It was like if you went this way, it was a double. This far, it was a home run. One of my good. favorite stories about Logan's Roadhouse is uh, a bunch of us were hanging out one day. We're we're driving around, and uh, somebody had to go like check their schedule at Logan's or get their check or whatever. So we pulled up, we're sitting in the parking lot, and one of our friends uh, is talking to his girlfriend who's working at, there at the time. Uh, she comes out to the car, and he says to her, hey, can you get us some rolls? And she says, all right, I got you, and leaves, and then comes back, and she says, okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, we should have those uh, by tonight. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you wanted ecstasy, right? He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> We wanted the fucking yeah. honey butter rolls, you dumb idiot. We don't want ecstasy, but I mean, like, don't cancel the ecstasy. <laughs> but now, can we also get some rolls? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what we really wanted was the roll rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. Oh, my God, that's funny. So, Jose, what you got? <laughs> Jose, you Did fall asleep? No, I don't know what happened. I just got booted. Oh. No. Everything went silent. Weird. All right. Well, we okay. we left off at Logan's. Okay. Shut. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, no. I got uh, trespassed for life, but still got my job back. <laughs> so suck that. The, uh, so you dropped out, but obviously this was Planet Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Planet Hollywood. I got banned for life when I got fired. Yeah, and still got my job back. I worked there twice. As he was getting fired, the manager <laughs> the manager jumped up on the desk and said, "I could shit on this desk right now, and nobody would do anything." Uh, it was bullshit. I fucking um, what, the fuck? what? Okay, so I was busting tables. We used a tray, a lot of glass. Uh, my elbow bumped a server and, um, you know, I dropped my tray. I made sure everything was cool, um, around the area that was next to us. Nobody was hurt. Everything was fine. Clean up the mess. Went back to work. They let me work my shift out, pull me out, um, pull me aside and tell me that a customer got cut. From the tray I dropped and was bleeding everywhere, and fucking um, like I did nothing to make sure that they were okay. So I flipped out and I was like, "That's bullshit." Show me the incident report. This is Disney. There's no way that happened, and there's no incident. And there wasn't. And that was the day I rode my fucking bike to work because my car. Oh was no! Oh, oh no! From like around the. Universal. Same like Oak Ridge area, yeah. all the way. No, no, maybe it was Universal. Yeah, I was yeah. living by Universal. You and then you got so you got to angrily pedal bike. away like an asshole. <laughs> 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 you just got to get that kick off, like to get the yeah. momentum going, and you're just like, I hate you guys. Yeah. And then uh, shout out to Margaritaville. Also got fired there for eating a piece of cheese. <laughs> fired there uh, twice. Quarter of a piece of cheese. Yeah. Right. Quarter of a piece of cheese. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to make the joke. For selling tickets. If you didn't bring it up, I was going to make the joke before you hit your number one. I was going to say Margaritaville. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not putting that bitch on my list. I'll shout it out, but I ain't going there to eat ever again. Fuck that. But we did I, scam a bunch of free food out of them when we were shooting the, the staff videos. Yeah, we shot a fucking epic mealtime spoof, and we wasted so much food, and nobody bat a fucking eyelash. <laughs> I eat a quarter of a piece of bio cheese they were going to throw away, and I get shit canned, and they act like the fucking they busted the dude who's been scamming millions from the company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they did not fire me for the time that I fit about fifteen steaks in my pocket. Because <laughs> <laughs> they were like at that time they were like individually packaged. You know how many individually oh packaged steaks you can fit into cargo jeans, uh, cargo shorts? <laughs> Just gotta make about sure a week's got worth God. of good eating steaks for two. Just got to make sure you got a good belt, right? 
But you know. Oh my God. Wrong. So, okay, I broke it down like this. I'm hitting number six, Cracker Barrel for breakfast. Cracker, All right. Cracker Barrel breakfast right. is very oh. good. One more it time. Is. What's this restaurant called? Cracker Barrel. Okay. You <laughs> crackle did you barrel? I believe you called it Crackle Barrel. <laughs> and I was I was going to be barrel? very kind. Well, it was kind of like in the uh, the uh, McDonald's story, he kept calling it an escalator. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I call that an accent. Tomato tomato. <laughs> Crackle Barrel sounds way more exciting than Cracker Barrel. Like, honestly, they should consider changing that name to Crackle Barrel. Crackle Barrel is where the all of the original Crackle programming goes. <laughs> right into the Crackle Barrel. <laughs> uh, shout out Crackle Startup. If you're not watching it, watch it. <laughs> uh, and then I'm hitting up Chick-fil-A for lunch. Like, their breakfast is good. But I feel that their breakfast sandwiches are bullshit in size compared to what they offer for lunch. They're a little bland, too. Yeah. So if if I were to choose breakfast or lunch out of my Chick-fil-A, it's going to be lunch over breakfast. Yeah. We've had many business lunches over Chick-fil-A. Now that it's time to eat, eat. Uh, I am going to hit up Logan's for their fucking butter bread, even though I think they're going out of business, which makes sense, you fucking tools. Um, <laughs> so aggressive. I don't know. This may be an area thing, but you guys, Red Tomato? It's like a salad bar buffet kind of no, thing? No, Sweet Tomatoes. Yeah. Sweet, sweet tomatoes. tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also known as Soup Plantation, and they did not survive COVID. Oh, they didn't. No, I don't Soup think so. Plantation. Th- that was a that was a big story at the beginning of COVID that they were shutting down. R.I.P. So yeah, it's a salad hey. buffet, but they also have soups. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, slapping that up for some soup and salad, and then I'm hitting up some four rivers for dinner you want to talk about some barbecue you want to talk about some yummies oh my god four rivers is that yummies and that barbecue never heard of never heard of that yeah it's a it's orlando based central florida based but they have a a a few locations and it's a it's the go-to barbecue down here unless you have like your your own personal hole in the wall four rivers is the shit it is the shit and then for dessert, controversial. <sighs> this one was hard for me because it was like, do I go ice cream? Do I go cheesecake? Oh, all right. But I'm going to go ahead and go. We hitting Wawa filling up the tank of gas and I'm getting a fucking 12 pack of Wawa chocolate uh, coated donuts. <laughs> Just. <laughs> It's just regular old donuts, but dipped in a chocolate candy shell like coating. So it's not like like frosting. It's not frosting. It's crispy. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know the type. They're fucking delicious. Yeah, yeah. I'm grabbing a twelve pack of those and fucking taking them all to the head. Yeah. If you don't know Wawa, you might be like, no, that's not a chain restaurant. But no, Wawa I is. About, I was I was about yeah. to say it, then I'm like, no, it definitely is. Yeah, yeah come no, on. It, is. It. It, it definitely say is. something. I'll go in there and order a full meal for four. Yeah, <laughs> and bring yeah. that shit home, and ain't nobody going to be disappointed. Apparently, the plan is to build a Wawa right in that same area as the White Castle and the Portillos. Jesus Christ! What are they trying to do to you people over there? <laughs> that sounds like heaven. I love it. Kind of good do. list, Jose. I that's like cool. I like the that's theme. quite the day. That's a good day. You, you yeah, told that's, a great that's story. A, that's an Odyssey, right yeah. there. I like it. That, that, otherwise, I was having I was having a real hard trouble piecing the list, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna piece together my meal. Yeah, go with day. Yeah, there you go. Wild. Oh, shout out McDonald's Dig. fries. Yep. Did you guys see Arby's Holy is thing. doing crinkles now? Yeah, uh, and that's not necessary. Arby's like. No. Like you you're the only fast food place that does curly fries really. So like why why yeah, are you branching curly out? Curly fries and headache cakes? Yeah. I, I feel like I, one for two on a good crinkle fry experience. I've done it twice. The first time 
uh cold very underwhelming not impressed second time nice but i feel like crinkle Enjoy. fries at arby's complicates things like when they introduced the vanilla frosty at wendy's so like it's now if you go to wendy's and you order a frosty they're like chocolate or vanilla and in my head i'm like frosties are fucking chocolate like that's yeah. the Shit. default you, right now if Lately, you go to arby's been, we, we don't have them if you go to arby's and order fries they're like curly or crinkle and it's like no curly curly is the fry <laughs> if i wanted crinkle i would say crinkle yeah nobody's owing nobody's ordering the mo fries we all love curly <laughs> <laughs> got some fucking ship ass fries <laughs> Who's on Discord next, guys? All right. I believe we've got Juggalo John next. Uh, number six, Chick-fil-A. This has become part of my Saturday routine, even if I just get a milkshake. Good thing it's not your Sunday routine. Oh. Yeah, no shit, right? Uh, number five, Quaker Steak and Lube. It's a steak and okay. wing. It's a steak, steak and wing chain similar to B-dubs or Wingstop. But eight years before those chains, it started in a Quaker State gas station slash garage that didn't survive the 1773 oil crisis. O <laughs> open the next year making lemonade out of lemons. That look was carried on to the rest of the new locations, giving it a hot rod garage feel slash aesthetic. The list of 25 flavors is their main attraction, including their original Atomic flavor, which was the first chain to do the hype for the high Scoville unit heat scales and their wall of flame for anyone who beat their top flavor. It was so novel and, of her, uh, novel and unheard of, they made people sign a waiver beforehand. Not like today, where ghost peppers can be found in breakfast cereals. Yeah, I've only done that once. Been in one of those things. It was, it was pretty good. Uh, number four, good TGI Fridays. It has a special place in my heart after the one trip to Cedar Point. The one in the hotel was the only place in the whole park you could get Heinz ketchup. So we ended up eating almost every meal there. What? So I spent some time getting to know that menu very well. And I found that it has the most things I enjoy from a chain. But the vanilla bean we cheesecake are, is my favorite. We are all beautiful and unique creatures. You're I just learned there was a person who made meal decisions based exclusively on the type of ketchup they No, had. no, no. Apparently, a whole family made that decision. I don't know I if mean, this was... I mean, let's be fair here. I'm sure it was one member of that family. Yeah. That <laughs> like, well, I don't know which member, but one member was like, I absolutely refuse to eat anywhere that does not have Heinz it's ketchup. It's funny. And the rest of that family was like, I don't have the fucking energy. You keep pronouncing <laughs> it like one member of the family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that TGI, is wild as fuck You know what uh, a, a real dark horse from TGI Fridays I don't know if they still have it uh, But when they would do those like Pick three or pick five uh, Appetizer samplers the, uh, yeah. the fried green beans Really good uh, uh, Sure I don't get any vegetables in my diet <laughs> But I will sure, eat sure. a fried green bean uh, number three, Outback Steakhouse, mate. Of the steak chains, this one is my favorite. The cheese fries, the rye bread, great steaks. Kind of offensive words on the menu, according to Alana on YouTube. But all in all, it's delicious food. I do love a Bloomin' Onion. Uh, you got to get that Bloomin' Onion extra crispy was our move when we would go to Outback. So that Ooh, you don't get that oh. you don't get that raw center with the, the, the raw like wet onion. pieces. Yeah. 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 So... Do you see the TikTok where the dude went out on a Tinder date and he got a blooming onion? Right and there. Then he, no. And then he I didn't. he ate just the fried part and left all the onion behind. Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. Uh, did were you on Jennifer's TikTok channel? <laughs> <laughs> Might have been. Sounds like a deal breaker. It sounds like uh, that guy needs to go up against Fight Club Tony or whatever his name was. Uh, number two, Wendy's. Wendy's is, to me, the yeah. best fast food chain. Frosty, spicy nuggets, all the chicken sandwiches, those times they got the pretzel buns. You know what? I love pretzels. Not a fan Chewy of a pretzel bun. Not a fa Never too been. Too chewy. Yeah, too chewy, too slippery. Yeah, that too. Yep. 
And number one, because yeah, the way that it's uh, the way it's toasted, it doesn't absorb enough of the sauce. Yeah, quite right. yeah. Number one, Promonti Brothers. Uh, talked about it for the sandwich top six, but Promonti's has the best sandwich of grilled meat, melted cheese, and oil and vinegar based coleslaw, tomato slices, and French fries between two thick slices of Italian bread, as well as really great pizza that my friend Rich and Joe swear by. Solid. Well, hell, Sorry, Rich and Joe it. likes it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously. Like, I was on the fence here. I was like, I mean, oil and vinegar-based coleslaw, okay. Tomato slices, all right, all right. Oh, well, Rich and Joe like it, so. And sold. And Juggalo John in the chat says, no, it was the whole family that preferred Heinz ketchup. And uh, that's weird. Juggalo John, <laughs> explain yourself. Ketchup is for Ke- five-year-olds. <laughs> so if you have a preferred type of ketchup where it decides what restaurant you eat at, you got to reevaluate things. Like, All right. But to each let me own. tell you. Let me tell you. Let me give you a quick little. Did, did you Did you guys stop at the restaurant on the way back from a Doctor Phil episode you were taping? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Quick little, quick little peek into my the life of my mother in law. The other day she came over. I was grilling up a bunch of burgers. Now when it's time for food my mother-in-law cannot wait like i'm bringing the food in from the grill she's like getting her stuff ready like let's go let's eat and i'm like okay hang on let me like let me serve the food before everybody starts diving in you know like it's like trying to put pokemon cards out at target (laughs) i walk in and i'm getting the thing ready and she's got her bun all set and she's got the thing of ketchup and she looks at me and she says i don't know what i'm more excited for the meat or the ketchup and i was just like the fuck am I supposed to react? <laughs> like, how, what am I supposed to say in response to that? I was, I was, I was dumbstruck. I think I said something like, "It's gonna be great." Like, I don't, like, what do you say to that? <laughs> I don't know what I'm more excited for—the meat or the ketchup. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, that's why that my is... days are a blur, Lee. <laughs> Like this happens. So I'm like, what am I, I? Literally, what am I supposed to do? Oh, that is all right. Like, if I'm going to be here for a week, if I'm going to McDonald's and I get myself a double quarter pounder with cheese, like that comes with ketchup. That's fine. Like, I'm not asking for no ketchup, but I'm also not going to Five Guys and being like, yes, please put ketchup on this delicious hamburger. Look, give me a big cup of ketchup to dunk my fries in. I, I don't know. I don't get yeah. it. If you're doing five guys, you need to put that A1 sauce on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I do barbecue and uh, mayonnaise. So bizarre. All right. Uh, what you got, Mahoney? Okay. Uh, just a whole big pile of meat and ketchup. That's what I got on my list. <laughs> um, I don't know which one I'm more excited for. I don't know. It's just so number six, meat. Number five, ketchup. Number four, meat. Number three, ketchup. Uh, so fucking weird, man. It's the that weirdest. Is so thing. weird. It's very weird. Juggalo John in the chat says it's the whole family, and it's because he's from the Pittsburgh area. The whole city will break a bottle of ketchup and cut you with it for this talk. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, it's, it's an outrageous <laughs> thing to do. That's outrageous. I, like, again, oh, right, because you're from Pittsburgh. That's why you love ketchup well, so I know, much. Like, I know the Steelers play it or played at Heinz Field, so I assume Heinz is a Pittsburgh staple. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Definitely. That makes sense. Like, for sure. sure but I still don't yeah. give a fuck. Like, <laughs> he said, I hear you. I understand. I get it. I don't care. Like, sure, I I <laughs> could I, taste the difference. I prefer, I prefer Plotchman's mustard. No one knows about that shit but me. But I'm not like, well, I'm not gonna fucking eat this burger if it's got some <laughs> weak ass French's on it. Let's fucking oh, say. shout out to some of that Duke's mayonnaise. Mm, yeah, That's Duke's good is mayonnaise. good. I could taste the difference between Coke and Pepsi. Most people could. Oh, yeah, I sure. could oh, definitely. I could not taste the difference between a Heinz and a Hunt's ketchup. Hmm. Not in a million um, years. I'm like, no, but I don't know if I've ever had them side by side. I'm sure. It, so here's what I would say: if you put Heinz and Hunts or whatever 
in front of me, and I tried both, I bet I would have a preference. I bet I would be like, oh, bucket of ketchup A is better than <laughs> bucket of ketchup B. But I wouldn't know which is which. Like, the same way I would taste a sip of Pepsi and be like, this is Pepsi, that is Coke. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Bizarre. Whatever. All right. My number six is Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen has delicious desserts and has a far too underrated uh, grill area. Yeah, I was wondering yeah, if burger. anybody was going to bring up Dairy Queen after no, our discussion that's a good one. from a few weeks ago. Yeah, yep. that's a good one. Dairy Queen gets number six for being versatile. Really you decent want chicken strips. No, what do they call it? a blizzard? You want blizzard, a blizzard? Yeah. Great. You want a burger? Great. That spicy burger they got? Excellent. That flamethrower burger is the shit. Yeah, it's very so good. good. So good. You can get chicken tenders, and you they will give you like sausage gravy to dip them shits in. Yeah, Delicious. and they uh, recently they had a chicken tender meal that came with little like half dollar sized biscuits. That sounds wonderful. Ooh. Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. They make things that you're like Dairy Queen shouldn't have that. That's gonna suck, and then it doesn't suck, and you're like, okay, that's weird. It's great. Shout out or not shout out. Number six to them. Uh, number five, Portillo's. I love Portillo's, but I never get to eat Portillo's. Um, it's a shame. It really should be a national chain. Yeah, still enjoy it. Uh, number four, Five Guys. My go-to burger at Five okay. Guys is raw jalapenos and hot sauce. That's all you need. Wow. Just get that. Do oh. you do the single or the double? Um, Depends on the day, but bacon? usually the single will do fine. No, no bacon. No bacon. Raw jalapenos, hot sauce. Double Cajun bacon. fries. Yeah. Double bacon, barbecue sauce, may- and mayo. So there I am with my peppers. raw jalapenos, my hot sauce, my Cajun fries, and my two children who think the black pepper is too spicy. So <laughs> go figure. Mahoney over here like, muy caliente. Apple flung away from the tree. <laughs> yeah, but they're also down the hill. still kids. Like, they're still developing yeah, a palate. Yeah, they'll get there. They'll get there. Uh, my number three is Wendy's. I love Wendy's. Absolutely love Wendy's. Mm-hmm. Wendy's is very good. Uh, I think in recent years, probably the past ten years, the quality control at Wendy's has gone down a lot. Yeah. Like, I bet. Wendy's these days is as bad as McDonald's was ten years ago. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's Not that's up here. Well, yeah, but here's what sucks. The Wendy's that do suck, like, they consistently always suck. Yeah, now. terrible. But mm. Wendy's breakfast... Probably the best breakfast out there right now. Yeah, surprise. On fuck with them. Wendy's spicy chicken. Great. Yeah. Great. Great, great, great. Junior bacon uh, cheeseburger. When I started my list, Wendy's was number one. I was like, it's Wendy's all the way. That's the best chain restaurant. And then I was like, mm, we got a chain up here in the north called Papa Gino's, Italian place. Very good. Very delicious. I'm sure I'm the only one who knows about it, so we don't have to get too much into it, but. You know, it's a pizza place. They got pizza. They got subs. They got, you know, whatever you would expect. Pasta dishes. He's favorite. They got rigatoni. It's a great time. (laughs) Uh, And my number one is when we go down to Maryland every year, there's a chain down there um, that's expanded out of Maryland and and gone all over the place now, but still none up here by me. This donut place. It's got a ridiculous name. It's called Fractured Prune. Okay. Sounds ridiculous. What? Sounds stupid. Yep, I get it. I get it. Uh, absolutely amazing. They make the donuts fresh on the line, right in front of you. They dip them into whatever kind of glaze you want. There's all these different kinds of glazes you can choose from. And then they dip them in whatever toppings you want. And you just get a box of fresh, warm donuts that there's like made you know, to order. Blueberry pie dipped in a blueberry glaze and, and graham cracker crumbs and like. You know, whatever you want, like a chocolate glaze wow. with peanut butter chocolate chips on top. Like any anything you can imagine, like they'll make for you fresh off the line. Like I've never gotten a donut there that wasn't made six minutes earlier. Like every single donut comes off of the fryer into the glaze and then they send you home. With it. <sighs> nice. It's amazing. And it's in a beach town. So they're like, yeah, we're open at six until like 11. <laughs> and then we'll have made all the money we need for the day, huh. and we're going to get the beach. The closest 
Fractured Prune to me is 295 miles away. Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. <laughs> you can make it. 19 glazes, 13 toppings. And everyone has different ones. Like, because even in Maryland, like, it's one big road, essentially, the place we go. And there's, you know, 12 of them or whatever. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. We got to go to the one down on this street because they're the one who have this type of donut. The other one doesn't have that type. And you can, like, they'll oh make God. you whatever you want. But, you know, it's easier to go if they know what you're talking about. Uh, continuing ketchup talk in uh, the chat, uh, Juggalo John says he stopped eating at McDonald's because they switched ketchups. Oh, that's a hard stance. Okay. You know what? You got to fucking do you man yeah we all take we all, all right. take stances i'm just saying personally i could not tell the difference between ketchups if i had to and also i'm not five years old so i don't need ketchup <laughs> Look ridiculous. just roasting them <laughs> yeah, absolutely insane all right zero writes I in uh shout out to sonic and ruby's diner for their shakes uh to list proper arby's i like the meats and the rumors of them being at Arby's are true. Yeah, they got the mates. Mm -hmm. uh, then he said the favorite thing to get there is the smokehouse brisket. I would agree. The thing that it's they a smokehouse brisket and a Reuben sandwich. What I love a Reuben. Uh, they brought back the brown sugar bacon last year, just as COVID hit, and like I completely Whoa. missed that uh, you know time period of the brown sugar bacon. So I hope hope they bring it back again this year. Good pay. Uh, next up, Chili's. I don't really care for most pieces of Flair family restaurants, but there's something about Chili's that I'm always in the mood for. Favorite thing to get? Margarita grilled chicken. I like <coughs> this list. Very thorough. Yeah. Uh, next up, Greek chicken. Uh, a local chain. Has some amazing food, including kebabs and homemade baklava. Favorite thing to get there? Half pound of chicken and gyro meat, oh. which, fuck, man. Just half pound of chicken and some meat. Fuck yeah. Give me a big bucket of meat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Give me a Yobagoya bucket full of gyro yeah, meat, please. Uh, fries, how about go fuck yourself? How about just more gyro meat instead of fries? <laughs> gyro Next fries. Up is the Habit. They're, oh, fuck yeah. Uh, the Habit. Their malt shakes make it just edge out five guys. Favorite thing to get? A teriyaki char burger and a chocolate malt. Yeah, I think uh, Jose and I found a Habit burger in a airport one time. I think it was LAX. That was very yeah, good. Yeah, something like that. That and uh, we stumbled on a Smash Burger. Oh yeah, Smash yeah. Burger was all over LA. Smash Burger is pretty We're good. We're doing a uh, classic up show. We saw Stephen A. Smith's big, big ass forehead. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking Next into up, work. Uh, <laughs> sombrero. He says, "Living in San Diego, almost all of our Mexican food is fantastic, but Sombrero has that grease strips down your arm greatness to it." Oh yeah. Everything to get. Is the special burrito? This is refried beans and marinated shredded beef topped with mole. Fuck yeah! And then number one, Phil's Barbecue. Phil's is an award-winning local chain, and I was excited when one opened a few miles from me a while back. Favorite thing to get is a ribless and chickless dinner, boneless ribs and chicken, because I don't have time or patience to deal with the bones. <laughs> and then he posts an image that he should have tagged NSFW. <laughs> I am erect. <laughs> Look at this fucking delicious food. Yeah. I want to put all of that in my mouth. Yeah. Holy shit. Look at that. Mm. All right, what you got, Nice? All right. <laughs> all right. I want to shout out all of the, the, the pizza chains. Uh, we did top six pizzas, so we've covered a lot of this. But, you know, shout out Papa John's Pizza at Domino's. And also a local chain here is Mellow Mushroom. You know, it's a little more um, high end. But uh, we got a mellow mushroom around here. Oh, no later. shit. But yeah, it's very yeah. good. And they have some very cool flavors there. Uh, shout out McDonald's, obviously. Um, you know, classic, over a billion served. Uh, I also shout out Wendy's. And as far as a sandwich place, I couldn't fit it on my list, but I do love Firehouse Subs, my absolute favorite sub place. Get that hook and ladder or the Jamaican jerk turkey. Oh, yes. The sandwiches yeah. are just that was it the beef, that beef brisket's pretty good. Yeah, they're steamed or, or cheddar, cheddar brisket or something. Last time I went, I got a, a pepperoni pizza meatball 
So it was a meatball sub with uh, cheese and pepperoni on top of it. Oh, man. They're so Jesus good. Christ. And the great thing about Firehouse is the owner, uh, as far as I know, uh, doesn't hunt animals for sport like Jimmy John. <laughs> and uh, they never uh, funded a child molester for multiple years like Subway. So, Fuck Jimmy John's and Subway. Yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. All right, on to my proper list. My number six is going to be Seuss High Eat Station. This is a uh, a local chain. I don't know if it has made it outside of Florida, but it's basically Chipotle but for sushi. So you you go down. Oh shit, son! You go down the line yep. and you pick whether you want a roll, a bowl, or a wrap, and then you pick your proteins, you pick your veggies, you pick your sauces. And there you go. You can get your shit. You can get a fucking sushi burrito tempura fried. It's that ridiculous. Awesome. However, they're at number six because since COVID hit, they've changed the way their restaurant works. So now you order on a screen and then wait for them to do it for you. So you're not going down the line building it with them. So their quality control has gone out the window. Like I brought home... Seuss High for us one time. I opened my bowl and it had no sauce on it whatsoever. Like mm. that is unacceptable. But uh, hopefully one day they'll get back to their their pre COVID greatness. Uh, my number five. I'm gonna do. It's a duo. Uh, five Guys is delicious. Also, I want to put Shake Shack on here because um, Five Guys is. I, I would say the. Five Guys is my favorite, but Shake Shack is really good. But Shake Shack is harder to come by. It's not as uh, easy, easy to get to as a Five Guys. Uh, hey, Kelly, uh, what are you going to get at Shake Shack? <laughs> Plain a hot dog. <laughs> uh, my number four, I've always loved it. Uh, uh, recently, we've been getting it a lot. Arby's, man. I love the meats. Oh, they have the meats. Oh, the... So I, yeah, I did so get good. that um, orange creamsicle shake like we talked about last week. Oh, it's good. And uh, my go-to lately has been the quarter pound beef and cheddar. It's so beefy, so cheddary, and you just your face stinks after eating Arby's, especially a beef and yeah. cheddar because it smells like beef, cheese, and the onion roll. It's not a good look, but it is, <laughs> it is delicious. My number three is my only true sit-down, get-served-at-your-table restaurant, and it's one that's also fallen out of favor. But, like, all-time, my all-time favorite sit-down restaurant would be Outback. But, like, their quality has gone out the window over the past few years. You know, they're always taking the good shit off the menu, but for a while there, like, if we had a special occasion... A birthday, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Christmas, fucking whatever. Easter, uh, somebody got a promotion, somebody got pregnant, somebody got married. We went to Outback to celebrate. Like, All right. nine times out of ten. ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, steaks. Uh, like, one of my favorite things at Outback was this blue cheese chopped salad it was a chopped salad with blue cheese and uh, like a raspberry vinaigrette and candied pecans in it like you wouldn't expect that from from a, a fucking outback steakhouse but definitely yeah, not obviously blooming onion so good so good uh my number two portillo's like there's no other restaurant that if i am in a town that has this restaurant, I have to go to it multiple times. Yeah. Like, we go to Illinois, we go to Chicago for a show or just visiting. We have to get Portillo's at least once, if not twice. At yeah. least on the way in, on the way out. Yeah, I yeah, got. We hit, we hit it up before all in. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I I signed up for a Portillo's mailing list so I could get a sneak preview of the Orlando Portillo's. Before that. We were making four-hour round trips to visit the Portillos in Brandon, Florida. We, like, uh, the Rodriguez's came down for vacation. We all loaded up in their van and drove to Brandon we to sure eat did. Portillos. <laughs> we sure the fuck did. 
And and um, let me look here. Uh, oh yeah, I don't regret any of it. No, absolutely not. <laughs> and my number one, you know, it is absolute trash food. Uh, like Lee shouted it out. Their their menu is not the same as it used to be, but like as far as fast food goes, nothing makes me happier than a Taco Bell. Give me a five dollar box, or let me order. You know. <laughs> seven things off the menu and it's only ten (laughs) dollars and i'm a happy boy i just shove that trash into my face and uh i'm content and uh if you go to taco bell and you do not order a baja blast you're a fucking cop (laughs) (laughs) and not just a cop you're a crooked cop yeah (laughs) i will say one thing that would make me happier than a taco bell a KFC Taco Bell. Like, regular Taco Bell, great. But give me the ability to get anything I want from Taco Bell and anything I want from KFC, even better. Yeah, see, I, yeah, I would. For the Taco Bells out of taco meat, they can only serve you chicken tacos, and the KFC <laughs> only has hamburgers. Yeah, I feel like uh, <laughs> KFC Taco Bell, they are not good at either of them. Like,. They don't have the ability to be a competent Taco Bell or KFC at the same time. So they're, they oh decide to be uh, mediocre both. And even if I go to a Taco Bell KFC, I'm getting solely Taco Bell food. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, like, you, say, you know hey, what they need to you're do? You're allowed, man. It's okay. I feel, no, no I feel like here. I've brainstormed this before. If you've got a Taco Bell KFC... Like, make some some crossover menu items. Like, why aren't you doing a taco... Like a fried chicken chalupa? Yeah, with gravy on it. Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. It's a burrito, burrito chicken sandwich. Yeah. Like, you just take two slabs of chicken and put it on a burrito and say, there you go. Yeah, I'm real hungry. I'm 100 percent fucking hungry. Eating a bowl of frosted flakes after this show is over. Oh, I'm definitely smack when this shit's over <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, who's next on Discord, Kelly? I don't know. Let's unlock my phone and find out. <laughs> <laughs> it's Juan again. It's Juan again. Uh, scrolling. That's the name of Juan's sitcom. <laughs> it's Kristen. Has uh, you take it, Kelly? You got it. Yeah, I got we Kristen, right? Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. who's next? All right, cool. Uh, so Kristen went with sit-downs and mostly nostalgia picks since we rarely eat out. Oh. Uh, Max and Irma's. I probably You're chose gonna this place. just going to let that eat out joke just, just say <laughs> Yep, yep. Right. I was just going right. to let it go. All right. Just whatever. Speaking That's of fine. things we'd like to plug. <laughs> <laughs> Max and Irma's. I probably you chose know, Real shame, place. but whatever. That's fine. <laughs> for a few birthday dinners because of their buffalo chicken sandwich. They also had a Sunday bar, which in a pre-COVID world was pretty cool. Yeah, I can't, uh, it's pretty good. I can't ever Las see Palmas. myself going back to a buffet. No, bu- bu- buffets are done. It's over. Yeah, I'll go back to a buffet. Let's do it. We're <laughs> safe. We're all vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, like, We're safe. Yeah. It's not like Shove buffets were ever not Chinese disgusting. food at the buffet. No. Like, like, I've seen too many pictures of the people sh- shooting their particles out of their mouths at each other, though. Well, yeah, that's always been the case. Like, buffets have never not been disgusting. No, like, I knew it, but I didn't know that back then. Right. Particles can't harm me, Kelly. Blast They're... them all over the chicken fingers, and let's go to town. <laughs> I'll go to a Chinese buffet if it involves a stranger spitting on me. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, Las Palmas, a little bit on the cheat since there are only four locations in the Chicago suburbs. Authentic Mexican was always a treat to go. They had hot chicken and potato dish. Hell yeah. That was incredible and was my first introduction to Pico de Gallo. That's so uh, funny. TGI Friday. Like, my first Pico experience is hilarious. <laughs> TGI Fridays. It was always overpriced and loud, but the appetizer sampler was the coolest shit as the kid. Yeah, Fridays as a, you, as a kid. You cannot fuck with Fridays appetizers. Yeah. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm a real basic bitch and love their sauces. Hot barbecue is my jam. There you go. 
Uh, chilies, those chipotle chicken crispers of the business, ranks high for consistency. Fuck yes. So, do you guys know what these chipotle chicken crispers are? Oh, we're gonna we're, oh, we'll get to those later. Now. Okay, we we gonna talk about those later. Well, we'll get to those okay, later. Okay, okay. Uh, and finally, Kristen finishes out her list with hula hands. Imagine a nicer Fridays, no wacky shit on the walls, but the same kind of food with mood lighting. <laughs> they had my absolute favorite buffalo sauce, and I ordered my very first legal drink. Chocolate Godiva Martini at the Old Brook Mall or Oak Brook Mall wow. location. Martini. Oh, fancy. Look at you. So fancy. Love it. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, who's next on the Discord, Nice? All right. We got my wife, Mary Nice. There she is. Speaking of things, Nice wants to plug. <laughs> uh, number six, Frisch's Big Boy. Going back years later, it was not as great, but it holds a lot of nostalgia for me. It was our usual restaurant because it was very kid-friendly. Is that the same as, like, a Bob's Big Boy? Are they all the same Big Boy? I'm, I'm not asking sure. Not I, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. But they do have that, like, the the Cupid doll-faced character out front that looks yeah, like okay. that guy. Good is then. Randy's Big Boy is a very different <laughs> restaurant. Incredibly different, yeah. Number five, Taco Bell. The best good bad food, our go-to fast food place. I can consistently get great veggie options there all the time. That's true. And they recently That's brought back true. the potatoes. So, Taco Bell is definitely the best dog food in town. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four, Portillo's. Always great food, and the tamales are like crack. Lower on my list because it's only been a Chicago treat until recently, but I plan on changing that after the new one in Orlando opens up and all the white people get tired of it. I added that last part. Uh, number three, she echoes my number six, Seuss High Eat Station. Chipotle for sushi would be higher on my list, but they have a habit of messing up to-go orders. Also, we need one closer to our town, but I love being able to get a quick tasty sushi roll or bowl and a side of spicy cauliflower yes the spicy cauliflower uh you know it's just like battered fried cauliflower it was like super crispy real good like i spicy ate spicy and cauliflower does not compute in my head dude i ate cauliflower that's how good it is mm -hmm. that's how good it is and it was literally when we lived at our last place it was one of the closest restaurants to our condo and right in the same shopping center as our grocery store. So we would eat and then go grocery shopping. So we weren't, you know, shopping hungry. That's smart. Number two. Uh, this is a, a, a real good one uh, out of left field. Bob Evans. It's such a basic uh. boomer food, but I love a Bob Evans breakfast. Yeah, like... For the longest time, Bob Evans biscuits and gravy were like my go-to biscuits and gravy. Uh, she continues, I grew up on Bob Evans biscuits and gravy, and it's still my favorite. There you go. Even though I know there's so much better biscuits and gravy out there. And m her number one, I completely missed this one. Uh, it was on Jose's list. Four Rivers Smokehouse, an Orlando barbecue chain that is amazingly delicious. In addition to great smoked meats... They also offer veggie options like plant-based Beyond Burnt Ends, which taste just like smoked meat. Legit. Legit fucking plant-based brisket. You you wouldn't know the difference. Also, they Just eat the brisket and not some weird alchemy bullshit. <laughs> That's what... Come on. No. Come on. No. It's, you say that because you haven't had it. It's so that you're not eating meat, Lee. <laughs> It's the the, okay. the moral of it. It's not that she doesn't like the flavor of meat because meat is delicious. Also, right. their baked cheese grits are amazing. It's a rare treat because it's expensive and not close by, but I really love it. And yeah, it's our go-to uh, for the past four or five years. On my birthday, we get Four Rivers, and you know we don't eat a whole lot of meat the rest of the year. You know, when we get fast food, we usually get meat, but generally... Meat is low in our diet, so we get Four Rivers once a year, and we get so sick, but it is so worth it. <laughs> you people and your fucking principles. Can't wait. 
No Heinz ketchup, though. <laughs> The, the sides at Four Rivers are legit. Like, the best mac and cheese and baked beans, I think, anywhere. Oh. I love a good baked bean. All right, Kelly, what you got? What do I have? All right, number six. Got to unlock my phone. Yep. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, purely for the time we went there together at Toy Fair, and Jose <laughs> did the power move of <laughs> waters for the table. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to make sure yeah. it uh, looked like a place that we all would have went thirsty for for a while yeah if nobody <laughs> said what and, and it also looks like a place where if i would have ordered a water i would have got a water and that's it <laughs> right and there would not yeah. have been like one person wanted water maybe i'll get water for everybody yeah and then it would have been like well these guys are making me walk back and forth for waters when no it's your fault Bring waters for fucking everybody. That stops. <laughs> you control how many times you come to this table. I remember when that was like the standard at a restaurant where you sat down and they brought you water. No matter if you wanted right. to order something else to drink, you got water at the table. Yeah. Because there's some restaurants where like the bussers bring the water. Right. Like, you know, table right, sit, yeah, right. Somebody drops the water off to make sure you get something to drink. And then no matter what, if the server's busy or not, at least you have something. It's it's when you have nothing and your server still hasn't got there, that's when you just start getting aggravated. But yeah. If I get some water to bide the time while I'm reading the menu, you're not as some waters for the table. Getting McCranky. Yeah. Well yeah. also the, the best part about that power move is what? There were ten of us. Yeah, there was a bunch <laughs> yeah. of us. I was I was doing everyone a favor. You were. You were, you were. Doing it. I was trying to save him time and work. Just no look. Just bring everyone a water and fucking let's not do this thing. <laughs> and then just bring everyone else, you know. Let's not do this fucking dance. Yeah. <laughs> we can bring the drinks. Let's go, homie. Uh, my number and five then, is... fucking, but you Don't forget about like the dude who the manager that looked like he banged the server. Right. Yeah. That was <laughs> oh, a yeah, that sure was a did. real experience. Forgot about that. Uh, my number five, Chili's. So my favorite thing on the menu at Chili's is their chicken and waffles. Yes. Which takes the Chipotle chicken crispers. Yes. And plops them on these tiny little waffles that, like, I'm pretty sure have, like, little sugar crystals in them. Yes. Oh, my. They're so That's good. Cool. Yeah. You get you take a bite, and then you bite into one of these little chunky sugar oh crystals. As you're eating Chipotle chicken and waffles, oh my god! Like, yeah, it's so good. You joke about mouth feel with like Guy Fieri, but like <laughs> that's a mouth feel that is unbeatable. Yeah. <sighs> I want some chilies now. Do you see our boy Guy Fieri just re-signed with Food Network for three years and eighty million dollars? Oh my god! <laughs> good for him. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, is his restaurant still money, open? Son. Uh, he does have assume. restaurants open. That one that was in Manhattan is not open or Times Square or whatever. Rent's too high. See, I like hearing about that because that's the same type of thing like you get into with like a sports star, right? Where they're like, oh, man, like, why does LeBron James need that much money? And it's like because LeBron James makes some other person a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, so why yeah. shouldn't he get that much money? Yeah, you know, like true. Guy Fieri is like ninety percent of the programming on the Food Network. Yeah. So you should be giving him like a truckload of cat. Like you should be paying him <laughs> in like gold. Like here, we couldn't afford to pay you, so we got you this island. Like you now just own this island. You know, if they're like, paying him eighty, they're expecting to make hundreds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I forget who it was, but I'm pretty sure it was on the Discord. Uh, made the comment that diners, drive-ins, and dives is the ridiculousness of the Food Network. Yeah, <laughs> but like 100. percent The Food Network has other shows that they show. Like, yeah, they play a lot of dining. Yeah, diners, like guys' and grocery dives. games. Yeah, well, I mean, yes, <laughs> he has like five different shows. Ridiculous is watching. They're like. MTV. Yeah, if I'm what's his face from ridiculousness, 
and MTV wants to talk about my contract, I'm like, it better be fucking enormous. Yeah. Because if yeah, I take my, contract... my show and leave, what are you going to show all day? Uh, yeah. Deliciousness. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> the food the themed episodes of Ridiculousness. And they're like, like, that's cool. We just signed a deal with Guy Fieri. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, my number four, Arby's. They have the meats. Mm-hmm. I love um, Arby's and Chili tonight. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Comic Con Arby's. Comic Con Arby's. <laughs> Arby's. Uh, number three, Domino's. They really turn things around. Fuck yeah, Domino's. <laughs> I, I mean, solid. for for the longest time uh, when we lived out on a dirt road, like the only place that would deliver to the house was Domino's. So if we needed food in a hurry, you get five different of those six dollar pizzas mm-hmm. and you're good. You're oh, good for you at go. least the next 24 hours. On yeah, food. everyone just screams, screams out of their room with topping they want. Yeah. Yep. Uh, number two, Red Robin. Love their burgers, and yeah, you can't go wrong with those bottomless fries and that uh, special seasoning they got. When you go to Red Robin, do you tell the waitress, don't ask if I want more fries, just keep them coming? <laughs> no, I say, fries for the table. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I just feel like, I don't know, I've never been to Red Robin with Juan, but just the way he said it makes me feel like the waitress comes up and is like, Hi, welcome to Red Robin. What can I? Bro, don't even ask me if I want fries. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Just keep bringing. And yeah, she's like, yeah. I didn't even get my opening sentence. Out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I'm imagining Juan just being very tactful about the way he <laughs> yeah. interacts with the Red Robin server. And then my number one, Portillo's. Wow. Oh, yeah, Portillo's. Never had anything bad there. No. Nor love. will you. Yeah, love the uh, sausage and Italian beef combo. Oh, yes, yes. Shove them all in my mouth. I There's get a cake a, um, shake. Yeah, I was going to say shout out to cake shakes. That, yeah, that yeah. almost made my dessert when I realized Portillo's did make my list. Uh, I didn't mention, so I got this giant Italian beef, and they give you uh, the side was cheese fries, but they give you the cheese in a little separate cup. I finished my fries, and I still had a lot of cheese left. So you better believe I dunked the Italian beef in the cheese sauce. Oh. Um, yeah, it was oh, like yeah. a like an elevated beef and cheddar. I highly recommend. <laughs> um, Jose, you get that beef and cheddar croissant all the time. Is it mm-hmm. like, like good? Is it like sliced yeah, cheese, or is it the cheese sauce? It's more like a sliced cheese, I think. Oh. Yeah, it's more like a, like a melted... Sliced cheese, okay, like a melted well, cheddar. Well, they need to put the cheese sauce cheese on the beef, like. And that's one of them sandwiches. You you gotta you gotta get too quick because that fucker gets it can get soggy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I have no problem getting to my Portillo's quick. Yeah, Portillo's <laughs> is food you need to eat fast, but you're not upset about it. No. Yeah. It's, a, it's a race against time and your arteries. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Chicago person. dogs got a lot of shit that will fuck your butt up if you just let it sit there. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta fucking down that. They just opened up a little Chicago dog place. Two yes. sisters, yes, opened up a spot, and the menu looks like it's a mini Portillos. And every time I drive by that motherfucker, it's busy. So they must be having good food because they got to be having good customers for it to constantly be. Like just jam it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna eat it so hard when I get back. Let me Shit, know. We might even get it on the way to the airport. <laughs> I'll do some recon. <laughs> Nothing like having Chicago dogs stink on you as you uh, take a plane. <laughs> I'll be asleep. I won't smell the farts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take us home, Jose. Eric Magnus on the Discord. Let's go. Let's do this thing. He says top six chain restaurants all of my favorite chains are from when i was overseas because i don't eat out in the states since you don't date and i always buy groceries look at you how that's possible shout out to Krispy cream i told them those donuts were so good you'd suck a dick for them and they proved me right <laughs> the lines were so long at the time that you had to get in line just to get in line uh, stick Subway. I know either Nigel hates the restaurant 
but it was the only restaurant I ate at when I was in Singapore, Thailand, and Philippines. And I guess, but I, I guess if you're traveling, sometimes you're just looking for like that known three countries. All he hit was subways, <laughs> and you know there was <laughs> all a, right. There was a period of time where I had an apartment, and uh, I was right next to a Walmart, and then right next to that was a subway, and I would walk there and get my sweet onion chicken teriyaki, and that was my go-to for a couple years, but this was well before Jared was outed as a sex pest. Yeah. So. I think Subway is like Jägermeister. Everyone had their period of their life where Subway was their go-to. What a lovely and metaphor. They, yeah, that's a good one. You know. I'll be here uh, yeah. in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Fat Burger. Their turkey burgers were awesome when I was in Vegas. Never had, never heard of it, but I I may have to try it. I've only ever heard of it from Ice Cube songs. Two in the morning got a fat Uh, burger. Yes. Then I have heard of it. I just, all right. Uh, They also, you know what they also say about Fat Burger? So deep, put her butt to sleep. Mm Mm-hmm. Never uh, trust that burger <laughs> and a smile. Uh, number four, Yoshinawa and Sukiya. Yoga, y- Yobagoya. Sure. Uh, Gabagool and uh, Gabagool <laughs> Lay. I'm, I butchered it probably. Yeah, uh, yeah. Those are the beef bowl places I mentioned before. You got it pretty good, I think. Yeah, Yoshinoya and Sukiya. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Fuck it. I'm one step away from a goddamn uh, death match. Yep. <laughs> Number three, Popeyes. Japanese women went crazy for Popeyes. Like I said before, Popeyes, 24, Disney Animation, and Sugar Free Kool Aid, <laughs> and you got them. You know what I heard recently, and I'm not sure if this is correct, but Popeyes, the chicken restaurant, is not named after Popeye the Sailor Man. It's named after Popeye Doyle from uh, The French Connection. That would make more sense, I feel like, than Popeye the Sailor Man, because all that motherfucker eats a spinach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is he Popeye eating? Doyle from The French Connection yeah. makes more sense than Popeye the world-famous cartoon? I mean, in that context, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what did... Did Popeye, Popeye in the French Connection he's... every time you saw me had a, a like a chicken leg in his hand? Yeah, you know who <laughs> definitely didn't have a chicken leg in his hand? Fucking Popeye the Sailor Man. He never had a chicken leg. He's not from Louisiana. Yeah, they Pop... don't serve a leaf of spinach in that motherfucker. Like, nah. Popeye's pipe tobacco makes more sense than Popeye's chicken. Fucking, I am what I am. Mm-hmm. I fucking smoke shit, eat greens, and punch people. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like me. I smoke greens. <laughs> eat <Take> people. <laughs> and punch it. Jose hits the ball and he goes. <laughs> yeah, it's real weird. I hit the ball in my fucking forearms. Bro. I don't know what the fuck. Is up there. <laughs> it's a gland thing. I may, have to get, I may have to get that looked at. Number three. Nope. Number two. Outback Steakhouse. One of the restaurants I used to go to on dates. I thought it was an Australian restaurant until an Australian woman I was seeing laughed laughed at me and explained that it wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah, just get a Foster's. Go out back, get a Foster's. Uh, number one. Man, this made a lot of people's list. TGI Fridays. My favorite restaurant to go on dates. I'd always go to the ones in... <laughs> Yokohama, Shibuya, Sh- Shibu, Shibuya, 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 yeah, Shibuya Road Call, and Machida. I, can... I should have gone to the one right by the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, there you go. That's the world famous. Uh, I did get caught there three times with another woman, so there's that. <laughs> three times? <laughs> Were they three different women? I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I mean, Otherwise, I would, the legend I, dies. I would imagine each three was a separate time getting caught by a different person. 
Like if that's just his jam. I mean, you know maybe what I mean? just like, stop. Maybe stop going to Fridays, bro. Maybe stop <laughs> taking <laughs> stop taking your mistresses to Fridays. Uh, honorable mention goes to KFC when my girl. Oh, I'm gonna put you. Seiko. Seiko, yeah. Uh, flew here to visit me. I was driving to the hotel and we passed the KFC and she was surprised that we had KFC. And I asked her, did she think KFC was a Japanese restaurant? And she said, yeah. I told her the Colonel was a white, was whiter. Okay. The Colonel was whiter than motherfucker. Hell no, nah, he ain't Japanese. <laughs> Then I took her to Denny's and it blew her mind because Denny's is in Japan was way different. Oh yeah, no, I went to Japanese Denny's. It's an entirely different chain. That's like it's wild. not anything like the same. It's just the same name. Well, that's kind of like uh, uh, in India, Dunkin' Donuts are known for their sandwiches. Like people don't eat donuts there. That's so why it's weird. only Dunkin now. It's a fucking Royale with cheese type shit. Yeah. Blew the mind. Bob Smith, thirty nine, uh, four sixty five. I guess. Oh shit! One more. Yeah, Fucking Bob. Real quick. Yeah. Bob Smith literally just joined the Discord and posted his top six. Look at that! Fucking Coming join in, in. twelve fifty eight. Right under. Beautiful. All right, so fuck it. Number six, Dairy Queen. The blizzards do magical things to me. <laughs> uh, I'm fortunately tolerant of lactose. The chicken fingers aren't awful because their gravy is nice. No, fucking the gravy's where it's at. Uh, number five, Gaddy's Pizza. Easily my favorite pizza average from here. The bacon cheeseburger pizza does it for me. Uh, hard to find. Almost all of them closed. Number four, Popeye's. Because the spicy chicken breast is legendary. The man speaks truth. Chicken yeah, sandwich is top three. Uh, he also calls after barbecue sauce, which is also pretty good. Uh, and num- Oh, shit. Number three. Oh, Charlie's. I've not thought about Charlie's in a hot minute. Uh, so the rolls and potato soup are the best around. No one will ever keep them down. Two wards. I've never heard of wards. Uh, they're only in one specific part of the South, but telling a high school age cashier you want the big one is never awkward. <laughs> <Jesus Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, number one, uh, Whataburger. I likely could easily eat this every day until it killed me. Uh, the Dr. Pepper shake is awesome. Oh. The spicy ketchup has ruined regular ketchup for me. Hit the patty melt. Oh, Dr. Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper, Pepper shake. shake. Yes, please. Mm. What a burger is very Pepper. good. Yeah. The one around here, like a Dr. little pricey. Sure. Because you're definitely even, paying for the, the experiment of the burger. Even McDonald's is pricey nowadays you get two yeah. uh combos and it's 20 bucks it's like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you're sp- you're spending the same amount as if you were to go sit down at somewhere yeah, yeah uh, get like an actual burger bob smith uh joined the discord and he says god i remember when a bunch of folks from the wum went and created their own thing and it's still sort of up <laughs> uh and so I said, motherfucker, we've been up. We've been <laughs> like, up. We are up as fuck right now. Come on. Yeah. We're all hard as a rock. <laughs> yeah. Give me the well, big one. that was one. fucking great. That was fun. A lot food's of so cool. this week. Appreciate it, man. Food uh, is who'd great. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought a food podcast, food episode would have brought people back out? Uh, who'd who have guessed? We thought. We knew. Fucking good. Sounds like it's time for a wrestling episode. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Mahoney, what do you think? <laughs> Let's do wrestlers or chicken sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> just a picture oh, of a wrestler, and you're like, wrestler, and then it's just a picture of chicken oh. sandwich. No, what we got to do, Kelly, is we got to find a series of uh, food themed matches and then watch them on the show. Mm-hmm. We'll fucking blow up the SEO. We'll be the hottest podcast out. in the fucking world. Yeah. Uh, do the one of uh, what was it? Moxley came out with that fucking hot dog, hot dog cart. <laughs> yeah, squirting <laughs> everyone with fucking mustard. <laughs> All right, uh, what are we doing next week, guys? Uh, so this Monday is Memorial Day, correct? Yes. Yes. That so is correct. Next Tuesday, in memoriam of Memorial Day, we're gonna do top six fictional soldiers, remembering some of the. Fake soldiers from the past, and and yeah, giving them the reverence they deserve. So you know, oh, you know who's making that list? Who? 
no, not no. Oh, come on. Were, do, do those do they count I'm as soldiers though? Because they were medics. Oh my god! I mean, I'm sure. If anything, that's the, the one that, that they belong on. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I think every list needs to have mash on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's the other homework. Everyone shout out one mash character. Oh my god. No repeats. <laughs> Mahone is like Hawkeye, not the one you think. <laughs> Clinger. I'm gonna pick many faces. <laughs> There's was a one was named like Radar or something, yep. right? Yep. Ah, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, There's yeah, my yeah, Mash. Yeah. Ra go. Radar. Ooh, radar from Mash is how I learned about what a palindrome was. Oh. Shout out to Snow Job. So Mash was an uh, educational podcast. Yeah, Mash was an educational podcast for sure. Yeah, I know with go. a banger like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god! Should get a remix going for that. There's a lot of options on this thing. It's, it's, it's going to be great. We're excited about it. This. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fucking great. All right. Uh, We'll do that next week. We're going to call it because it's late as fuck. we have been a long time. Uh, but I, I read comments worthwhile. this week. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll have shit to talk about next week for sure. Because uh, I got a whole big stack of uh, that good Japan shit came in the mail this week. So Ooh, yeah. And I would have. I'm definitely going to a comic store before next week. There you go. That's true. Yeah, buddy. Look at this cool shit you got. Also, rest in peace, uh, Kentaro Mayuria. Uh, yes, Mayuria. that's right. That did happen just after the show. That's like Wednesday morning, I think. That yeah, that out. made me that's, real sad. And New Jack. That's so wild. Yeah, and, geez, New, and Jack New Jack, too. Fuck, that was a long week. Yeah. I think you took, didn't you say he uh, kind of got to a place where things aren't so horrible for guts so if it's the end it's not the worst yeah kind of i'm i'm kind of all right where if this if this is where it ends i'm kind of all right with that like i know there is still some stuff that hasn't been released over here so we'll see how that comes out <laughs> and maybe didn't turn the corner and got horrible that'd be yeah that'd be you never nice. know fucking wild R.I.P. to the yeah. Fiend. He's going through some shit right now. So, so join us next week <laughs> at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central at youtube.com slash panels on pages. Uh, be like Bob Smith. Hit us up on that Discord at discord.panelsonpages.com. Uh, for Jason Nyes, Jose Guzman, Kelly Harris, and my good buddy Mahoney, I am the Lord Reverend the Rodriguez. We'll talk to you guys next week. Night. Love you. Bye-bye. That's it. Show's over. We're done. I feel God in this chilies tonight.